Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden. Where we continue to follow the capture and killing of Osama bin Laden now. Those are just some of the scenes overnight as thousands of Americans gathered in celebration of Osama bin Laden's death. Former Navy SEAL Rob O'Neill says he has thought about the mission every day since that May Day in 20. Multiple conversations you had with Rob O'Neill over the past year and a half. How'd you get And you described that his head kind of exploded yes. when you hit I, him. I actually hit him three times because I shot him twice when he was standing and once on the ground. That is the fucking American badass. Go, go, go. We are not going for fame and we are not going for bravado. We are going for the single mom who dropped her kids off at elementary school on a Tuesday morning and then 45 minutes later she jumped to her death out of a skyscraper. If you need help, hang up and then dial your operator. I'm Rob O'Neill, and this is the Operator Podcast. Hey, welcome to episode 92 of the Operator Podcast. I'm Robert J. O'Neill. Today is a very exciting episode that I've been anticipating for a while. I've got a guest by the name of Will Chesney, very good friend of mine. We used to call him Cheese. He's the uh, author of the book, No Ordinary Dog. It's about the life of of Cairo, the military working dog. And uh, Cairo, you may have heard of, he was the dog that went with us to Abbottabad, Pakistan on Operation Neptune Spear to kill Osama bin Laden. Cheese and I rode in on the same helicopter together. I was in a folding tripod chair on the um, the port side door. Cheese was right next to me with Cairo. And uh, we did that mission, many other missions together, a lot of combat. He was on a lot of missions that I was on, and he saw them from different angles, different uh Different combat, a couple different ambushes, a lot of gunfights. His point of view is a different side of some of the mountains that I was on, and it's great. And he's just a, a great guy. Our training trips were awesome. We get it, we'll get into those a little bit and some of the combat stuff. But, uh, yeah, we flew in together on the same helicopter. We were on the Bin Laden ma- uh, raid together, and then we flew out on the same helicopter together. Uh, a lot of anticipation on are we going to make it in, what's going to happen in the house, and, well, we just did it. Can we, can we get out of here? And a couple other fun things there. We'll we'll talk about mutual friends from uh, that, that are no longer with us. Just to just to remember how awesome these guys were, and just what a fantastic part of our lives. What a great team we were so fortunate to be a part of, and and obviously a great mission that we were very successful on. It started off completely wrong and ended pretty much right. And uh, I think this is the first time two guys from the mission are going to talk about it. So uh, this is episode ninety two of the Operator Podcast. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. I want to welcome my former teammate, Will Chesney. He and I worked together for a long, long time on some East Coast SEAL teams. And I know what you're thinking. The difference between the East Coast teams and the West Coast teams is uh, the West Coast teams surf. They're tan. They're in really good shape. On the East Coast, we used to smoke cigarettes. Pretty much the only (laughs) difference. Well, welcome to the Operator Podcast. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great, buddy. How are you? That is good to hear. I immediately lost what I was looking for. Um, yeah, this will be fun. So I'm going to give you a quick background on what we do on the Operator Podcast. I call it the Operator because um, I consider anyone who's doing anything an operator, right? Um, we, You and I used to be operators, and now we're – basically, if, if you're a plumber and you make the plumbing work, you're an operator. Single mom is an operator. Um and, you know, I'm not calling myself the operator. I'm saying this is the life of the operator. I want to hear from other operators. And so I finally, ladies and gentlemen, have an actual operator, and that's Will Chesney. How are you doing? How is everything going? Everything's going great, buddy. It's good to see you. It's, it's good to see you, too. It's it's good to, right. it's good to do that. We, isn't it crazy that – because we've served together for a long, long time. Long time. And it, it doesn't it seem like once you leave, like you can stay in touch with each other or it kind of just you, – you can not talk for a year. Mostly – don't we catch up every once in a while? What's the my joke? Uh, I text you every Easter. Happy Captain Phillips Day. Uh, <laughs> that's right. See this. This is what's. <laughs> we did get him on Easter too. Well, Easter. we're gonna. Where, hey, where were you? Okay, we're gonna get to that obviously. So you and I were at uh, SEAL Team Six together, Captain Phillips. Where were you when you got the? Because this is before. Well, not before text, but we still had those pagers. Uh huh. Where were been... you when you, when we got the page for Captain Phillips? Good question. I was just sitting home. I don't remember specifically. Dang TBI. 
There's a lot of stuff I don't remember. <laughs> oh, you gonna get, you see, we got to get into that too because we just started the interview. We're already to you getting blown up. What the? Wait, how, what else is this one? It's TBI, right. Rob. Where was uh, for, t- t- um, TBI. T- explain TBI. Traumatic brain injury. I got hit in the noggin a little too many times. In 2012 hit with a hand grenade. Just over. I mean, everybody has blast concussions. You do, you have plenty breaching rockets in close CQB, just a concussion over and over. And then I yes. got hit pretty good in 2012, which you remember. And then I remember him. Yeah. Not so good after that. So now short-term memory it used to be migraines <laughs> a lot. Short-term yeah, but memory how's it, is kind of short-term memory goes pretty bad, but, but how does it affect your short-term memory? I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, um, yeah. Huh? Huh. Where we? <laughs> um, yeah. And you know, I didn't realize too, because when we were training, even with like the breaching, man, we were blowing bombs up. Like we're talking six feet from our noggins, like nonstop. Pushing it as far as we could, because that's what, what we didn't that, know exactly what was going to happen long-term. Going yeah. Well, there, there was no long term. There didn't seem like there would be a long term. Like we're going to, we're going to be dead before, you know, no. I didn't, I, I, you know, I just recently yeah. turned 48. I, there was no way I was going to live that long. Yeah. Right. And, What's you know, uh, remember somebody's uh, what's your four term, what's your four four term plan, and then earn. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that before. Remember that joke? <laughs> oh no, I actually don't. That's funny. Mm. Um, so here's what here's what we want to do. So um, I, what I want to do is give a like an intro. Um, because the stories are good, and what I've especially you know obviously everybody's story from the military is awesome. How you got there, why, um, whatever, where you're from. You know, a lot of people became. Marines because they tried to join the army and the guy wasn't there. I tried to join the Marine Corps, became a Navy. What, what, when, when, what made you, cause you went in in 2002, correct? Yeah, I joined in high school when I was 17 years old. I went in in 2002. It's probably <clears throat> late middle school, early high school when, I mean, I was in a trailer park in Southeast Texas. It was a nicer trailer park. Like, it wasn't the worst thing, but it's a trailer park in Southeast Texas. It's like <laughs> pills, <laughs> basketball mall there's a lot of a lot of stuff to do and then once i started getting towards the end of high school i think cracks started coming around and you know i just i would booze and have fun and stuff like that but i just i needed to get out and wasn't going to college just so that was so you graduated high school in 2001 2002 2002 okay cool so so you were Nine so you were in high when school. i was a senior yeah, well, what was that like? What, what was going was, on? I can specifically remember standing in the library in high school, and they brought in TVs watching the planes crash. Specifically, remember that. And what do you what, what do you think then, as a senior in high school? I was ready to go get some get some revenge. Yeah, yeah. That was fucking yeah that's that's how I felt too. I just ready ready to, like everyone else. I want I, I my Let's my go. go- my go-to joke is uh, if they told us to invade Canada, I would have <laughs> at the yeah, time. Yeah, what the and, fuck was that? Let's. But let's you know go, why, yeah. why? Why would you? Why would you want to invade Canada? It's such a good hat for America. <laughs> such a good hat. <laughs> yes, that's a funny. real good. nice hat. So, uh, <laughs> so then now, did you go to the recruiter to to become get, become a seal or what? What went on? Hundred percent. So I decided, yeah. you know, whenever sometime in high school, middle school, and then. So I was 17, <clears throat> I had to go talk to my folks. I'm an only child, so dad was kind of uh, understandable, pr- proud probably, and pretty easy to convince. My mom was like, uh, a little more convincing. Yeah. Only mm-hmm. child. You want to go leave to the military and do one of the most dangerous jobs in the military, which you know, I don't think it's the moment. Anyways, we, we, have, we were well-trained, so it's not that. Anyways, it was kind of uh, – it took some convincing, but at the end of the day, I was 17. As soon as I turned 18 – I'm going to sign up, period. Like yep. they could just see, <laughs> just sign the paper, please. Signed up and uh, <clears throat> I worked with my pops for a couple months after high school because I'm terrified of heights. I'm not a big heights guy. My dad built construction towers, cell phone construction towers, the T towers and the monopoles. Oh, but that's like, those are, those are legit heights. So how, how, high, how high are those? A couple hundred feet to, uh, let's uh, just say average couple hundred feet. Right. No, it's, it's enough to where, like skydiving wasn't as bad. No, I don't love it. You love it. You know, anyways, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we, we have a lot of jumps together. <laughs> we have a lot of jumps together. My first, my only tandem. You were first. You're my first. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The the head lick picture. The head lick picture. My yeah. That, so anyways, oh, but climbing up a tower 200 feet, and my dad's advice like, well, and you're you're gripping, you get sweaty, you might slip, and then you fall, 
like if you're falling, you have a reserve shoot during skydiving. We're falling in a tower. I'm like, what's your advice? He's like, hook an arm. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Hook an arm. <laughs> hook an arm, bro. Oh man, we I might I gotta make that shirt. Hook an arm. Hook an arm. <laughs> I'm actually right. Let's go to my notes. Well, uh, well they had safety. <laughs> let's go to my notes. They had like my, safety equipment. Don't get me wrong, like harnesses, and you had these big well, hooks yeah, yeah. that you could. But I didn't. It's just it's a pain in the ass. You just yes. scale up the tower. They have these little poles. But anyways, that was my job after high school for a minute because I hate heights. And I was like, all right, I want to go be a Navy SEAL. I fucking hate heights. My dad, I want to spend time with my dad. It paid well because it was a good job. Oh, and yeah. Like, Let's see if I can man up and get my ass up the tower. And it was good. It wasn't <clears> – <throat> the heights was – easier to overcome than working with my father <laughs> I mean, why is he a hard he ass or what like, what no, he's just stubborn i love him i'm just making a joke he's, he was great but he had no fear like he'd been doing the tower gig for a long time and he didn't give mm-hmm. a shit about heights and i remember the first tower we were on to it's a monopole so big pole step bolts on the side to get to the top and it's a big t with antennas out and he's standing on the top on the x brace <clears throat> teaching me how to tie my equipment to the bolts Oh and trust God. your equipment you know all about trusting your equipment right so he's like uh-huh. oh back. yeah yeah and i'm you know 17 i'm like eh, I'm not there and he's standing there not clipped off and he's kicking my harness just kicking it and he's like trust your equipment and i'm like could you That's... clip in bro could you just clip in you're gonna you're gonna make me feel better if you use safety <laughs> you're doing hops you're yeah right uh, no that this. i mean th- that like i was more because heights are different when 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 you're at you know, 12, five or 15,000 feet. That's way different than being at 300 because the ground is there, man. When you're up that high, it yeah. doesn't look real. Well, one of, one of my go-to jokes when people ask about skydiving, they, they ask me about heights and I say, well, I'm not afraid of heights. I'm afraid of widths, like really wide places, which I don't think that's <laughs> even my joke. That's funny. Um, so, well, uh, now, so trailer park, East Texas, could you swim? Mm-mm. Our trailer park pool did not exist. <laughs> <laughs> Not like those, not like those high-end trailer parks in Arkansas. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, right. Nope. <laughs> but uh, I, I was, I was comfortable in the water. I swam growing up, and I wasn't efficient. I would say, but yeah. I was comfortable. I love that's, the water. That's awesome. That's so, so um, you go to boot camp, Great Lakes. Uh, what time of year was that? Ooh, when did I leave? August fifteenth of two thousand two. Okay, and then Next is it? Today. Is it the pipeline right to buds or do you have to do a school and get a rate? So I went to great lakes, did a boot camp, then went <clears throat> to an a school. So one of the things for kids listening, signing up my recruiter, don't always trust your recruiter. Mm-hmm. I don't think she had any ill intention, but when I went to do as a female, believe it or not, she was cool. Yeah. She, um, so you know that there's an only certain list of schools that will allow you to go to buds selection. Yes. Selection. At, at, the, at the time they're, they're at called the time. Sor- source rating. So source rating. Ba- basically just to explain it to everybody there, you, there's a, a rate in a Navy is like your job, your MOS. So I was a PR, which obviously military speak PR stands for air crew survival equipment. Men. Perfect sense. Um, Perfect. PR is a good one to have. PR was <clears> back. <throat> I got that because that was in Tennessee. It was two weeks. What, what, what a school did you go to? So she had me sign up for IT, information technology, whatever yes. seemed like a pretty good school. But yeah. for submarines, a submarine got me a bonus. And I'm like, all right, I, I used to be pretty smart. I was like, I can go through a different school, a dif- difficult school. Maybe I'll learn something and I'll get a little kickback and it's not that much longer. I wasn't too worried. When I get to boot camp, I remember sitting there. <clears throat> like I said, I forget a lot of stuff, but I will yeah. never forget sitting in this room and this Navy chief walks up to me had to be obviously towards the beginning. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, you're not going to buds. Why? Okay. So I'm like, Oh shit. Is this the whole world collapses, right? You know, how that well, yeah, I'm like, in the oh, Navy. What nope. the fuck? Mm-hmm. So he's like, you have it school, which was a source rating that allowed you to, but he said, since you have submarines in your contract with the bonus, oh, shit, it doesn't allow you. And he was an old submarine chief. Yeah. And he knew it was going to happen. So he's like 80% attrition rate. You're just some young punk kid who's going to show up at Buds. You're going to get kicked out of the Navy. You're going to lose your IT school. You're going to lose your bonus. And he's a submariner. You're going to lose a good opportunity to experience what submarine life is like, which could go either way. <laughs> but yeah, that could. There's a yeah, the su- sub life. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna get an experience, but I mean, you also get an experience, experience in prison. <laughs> yeah, one thing I would have liked to have done is a lockout on the sub. Yeah, that I've heard. I, I've heard good things. 
But so what? So what went down with that? What, what did, so, did he get get rid of your rate, or what did he do for you? Yeah, I don't know exactly how the conversation went. I must have blacked yeah. out. <clears throat> but dude, I just showed up. I'm nobody. I'm a new recruit. Yeah, at Great Lakes, and he's a Navy chief. Yep. I don't know exactly how it went down, but I must have said something like, "Hey, man, you can send me to Bud's or send me home." Or I don't know what I said. I was sure I was respectful, but somehow yeah. I got him to drop my submarine contract. He signed me up for Machine Snake MMA school, and that yes. was there in. Uh, Great Lakes as well, nine another nine weeks, whatever. Blew through that, and then I got to go out to Coronado. I think about three months early, so I left in March and headed straight to Coronado. And I was a white shirt helping the third phasers go through the island and just being around, helping. So I, I was it was really cool to be able to show up early. And yeah, so that would it. have been. Let's see if my math is correct here. So we're talking about your the <clears throat> graduating class is probably about two forty three then, right? So I pay attention. Forty six. You graduated 246. I graduated 246. I was there to help class 243 go through there. That's finals. what I was suggesting. See, I was trying to pretend I was smart there and you corrected me. <laughs> you are smart. <laughs> but no, did that, did that, that help? Did that, did, did that help though? Uh, just seeing what's going on at Buds? Cause there's a lot of crazy shit chaos going on there. What'd you think? It was really cool to watch, man. It was just like, you see it and it's just, you're there to achieve that dream and to see people doing it. And then you get to be around the cadre, which you, consider like gods like yes. oh my gosh real live navy seal that are gonna be pushing me to the limit and then you see a class it's like holy fuck y'all in third yeah. phase whoa that's pretty cool dude the brown shirts because so the way for people listening who don't know the way it works your white shirt when you show up you have to get through hell week the heart allegedly the hardest part of seal training to get your brown shirt when I got there um in the 90s and I saw a brown shirt it was like that was to me was a guy the buzz instructors were fucking off the charts i actually my buddy right. sean brennan who i did a platoon with at seal team two one of the first guys i met he was a brown shirt and he tried to beat me up in the bathroom and he probably would have <laughs> if uh i wasn't faster <laughs> <laughs> so uh so you get there one one day any 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 well i mentioned hell week so like how was hell week for you how many guys you going to hell week with <clears throat> so we classed up what is it doc i want to say i say 188 i've heard different numbers so anywhere from yeah. 180 to 200 and we were a summer class. So I think they beat us during NDOC a little bit more. We dropped a lot of guys during NDOC, surprisingly. So 188, I think, ish, starting there. And then we graduated with 22 originals, 44 complete with rollbacks. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. So the, what, what I had heard too, just to explain to people, but, um, uh, seal basic underwater demolition seal training buds uh, goes year round and there's winter classes. And the older you get, by the way, everyone was a winter class, but, uh, <laughs> The winter, they, I mean, believe, I don't give a shit who you are. You can get cold in the water, but it's obviously worse in the winter. But in the summer, it's warmer, so they beat you more. They, you know, cold in the winter they beat, beat you so more. I actually, I actually went through Hell Week in, in August as well. And okay. I, like, I wasn't afraid of the cold, but I was, uh, I was, I, I was afraid they wouldn't give me any sunscreen. <laughs> there's that. Yeah, you burned. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> there's that. So, but what is way, The water's but cold. It, the water they is cold. Like, it's well, longer. You can get hypothermia in ninety-five degree water. It just takes time. Right. It's like the whole. It's like the whole thing. Uh, how do you eat an elephant? Well, one one bite at a time. So, exactly. Because I can did specifically you... remember just because we're a summer class doesn't mean I wasn't coming out of the surf zone oh, jackhammering. Yeah. yeah. And then everybody else is like, it was cold, but it you know they just beat us more. They actually on our Hell Week T-shirts, yeah. we put hammer class on there because yes, they made up for it. So do good. you do That's you still thing. have your uh, do you still have your Hell Week T-shirt? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I did too. Oh yeah. Oh, I yeah. found I found mine, and I also found my uh, uh, Michael Jordan T-shirt I wore in high school. Neither one fit right now, and it's not because <laughs> not because my arms got bigger. <laughs> this is jacked. You know, it's an extra medium. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So anything, anything cool? Anything cool happened at Hell Week that you remember? Oh man, it was it was great. We had a really good class. I think the instructors hated us sometimes because we had a lot of jokes, a lot of fun. I made some of the best friends, man, in, in Buds, yeah. too, obviously through the teams as well, mm -hmm. doing what we did together. But in Buds, we, I made some great friends. You think crazy? Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I, yeah, I still have dudes I, went, I talked to once in a while. that Because uh, misery loves company. And I think going through something like that, if we're all miserable together, yes. we're going to – we're gonna. because for me at least, I – I think that Buds is the 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 older I get, the more fun Buds seems like it was. What do you oh, yeah. think? Same, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I'd go through Buds all over again if my body could. Like, yeah, I know my body can take it. I, it sucks. Don't get me wrong. It's there's a lot of shitty moments, but 
you have a lot of fun. And I know if I know of like, I can pass all the evolutions now. So you don't have to be so worried about like, all right, you yeah. have to pass this evolution or you're out of here. Like, oh, that sucked. But knowing you can do it, you think it's different? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got a lot of help. To, Go ahead. For the chance to be able to work with the guys again? Yes. I'd fucking suck it up, Buttercup. That's, you know, that's it. true, too. That's like the only thing I miss. That and, uh, well, the Trident in Tucson. I miss that. <laughs> of course. <it> doesn't, <laughs> you still I, still talk to, I still talk to Nelson, too. He's out there doing whatever Nelson does. He's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good times there. <laughs> so, so, okay, so. Uh, buds, you know, is anything, anything, you because I, what I like to say is like going through SEAL training is such a unique place that even people who didn't make it through have a, even guys that quit have a very unique story. Is there anything that stands out that's unique or something cool? You or your boat crew or a classmate or anybody did? All kinds of good stuff. So remember during breakout, you have the tents on the beach. Tell, you tell everybody break, what breakout is. Breakout is the starting evolution of Hell Week, which Hell Week is what week four or five? I think first phase, yeah, three, then. three heard, phases. Look, it was, it was, it was week five when I went through. I heard it's actually on an online correspondence course now. Okay, yep, that makes complete sense. <laughs> That's what I thought. Week five, so three phases. Yeah. First phase, you have Hell Week in it. Week five, breakout is the starting evolution of Hell Week, which is the toughest training. That's where we weed out. After you make it through Hell Week, you you might go away, but you're probably going to be there. Yes, when we start yeah. learning and all that stuff. So. uh during breakout, they put you in tents on the beach and everybody's nervous because you're about to start hell week, which is yes. shit. It's hell week. And, uh, I had this berm that separated the compound, big, huge ditch. I mean, and yep. then the tents were on the outside, but everybody would leave the tents and just go piss right there in the berm. Cause you can't leave the tents. You're just waiting and waiting. Yep. We do break out and they break, they bring out the sixties and they yeah. crashes, make it rain. <clears throat> and they're like, don't lose your people. Right? Yes. And, and, of course, you lose your people. And that was the first time where I'm like, it shook me for a second. I can specifically remember like, oh, shit, I don't know where anybody is. And it's like, yep. oh, this is just a game that they're there trying. There you go. There you and go. it just clicked. I'm like, okay, let's just run with this. That's awesome. Stuck- yes. Yeah, but at first it was kind of like, oh, snap, I lost everybody. I'm like, it doesn't matter. We're good. Let's just roll. But then they put us in that ditch that we've been pissing in all night. <laughs> Oh shit! For whistle drills, <laughs> for whistle drills. So then I specifically remember being in the ditch, and everybody's in the water in one big line, and we're just making our way down the ditch. I'm like, we were just pissing in this thing. All of us, an hour ago, all of us. Mm. Oh, and then there was a, a whistle. Dead rabbit, I'm pretty sure in there. <laughs> oh yeah, people are duking it down. Yeah, a whistle drill uh, is they literally lay you on your belly, and like one is crawl, and two is crawl faster, or something like that, right? Something, whatever. They, just do. Yep. Well, that see, that's fun, so cool fun. because. You, at the time, you don't realize what they're doing is they're introducing you to chaos. You're going to lose your people. You got to keep your head. And this is, you know, and the best way to fuck that I found to fuck with someone is they make you because in Bud, you always have a swim buddy. They will make you lose your swim buddy on purpose to see how you respond. I had and they like it's not the same swim for me, not the same swim buddy that I had during Bud's, but they pat, uh, mixed us up with other people. The, the guy they put me with, he quit three minutes into it like he got he yeah. got scared and he quits like let's do it this is the only fun part of hell week right but it's kind of mm-hmm. cool though the way they do that and just to, to see how you respond oh, it's really cool it's genius but, dude watching the panic how contagious it is people just freak the fuck people out just ringing you just hear that bell ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and once you just realize you're like no this is just suck it up, man. One step at a time. It's like the, uh, the you know, you're you're dying of shame right now. You're you're putting your head in the sand and dying of shame. That's all that's happening. You know, stick it, up, fucking enjoy it. Take the shot. Enjoy man. it. <laughs> yeah. What else so, are you gonna do? <laughs> that is cool that at such a young age you recognize that because I just I didn't know I just knew they were gonna throw me out eventually. So I'm gonna just enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. As long as you'll keep me here, I'm gonna enjoy it. Yeah, cool. That's but right. I'm doing. I'm in Coronado. I mean, the barracks are beachfront property. What, the- dude? That's another thing that I specifically remember walking out of 602, whatever, not 618, the other one. 618, 602. We were staying there in the B. So Uh we were at 602, and I just got there from the trailer park. Got out, and that California ocean air hits me. I'm like, dude, we're living on the beach with a bunch of cool motherfuckers. And I'm, yep. It's awesome. Leave the compound, turn left. There's a a island pasta. Turn right, you can find a Carl's Jr. down in the IB. Like, this is a good place. (laughs) 
it's a good place. Yeah, dude, like you know, like I said, like you know, Carl's Jr., like fancy shit, like trailer park. It's awesome. Very fancy, exactly. Fit right in. <laughs> so, uh, so for me personally, um, because Bud's was like, it's never gonna end. It's I'm just gonna be here and try to enjoy it. But all of a sudden, we graduated. It's like fuck. I got to be a Navy SEAL and I got to sign SEAL team too. What? How, how did it? Like it's just over now. What? What it was your experience like graduating? So towards the end, I didn't know anything about the dream sheet really. And then they put it in front of us, and I'm like, so what's the dream I don't sheet? know if I want to. <clears throat> Towards the end, once you, they, the instructors know you make it on the, the last couple of weeks, dream sheet, instructors give you one. You can choose whether you want to go to the West Coast, the East Coast, or sign up for SDB. Yeah. And I didn't know if I wanted to, <laughs> I didn't know if I wanted to go East Coast or West Coast. Let's just say that. <laughs> if, 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 I love if, if SDV is a sealed delivery mm-hmm. vehicle. It's basically a really, really small submarine. If you're dying to know what it's like for everyone listening, just do this. Go into your bathroom and uh, fill your bathtub up with cold water. Turn the lights off and stay in there for three days. Right. But you got to be huge. You gotta be yeah. Big. Make sure you don't fit. <laughs> make sure you don't fit in the tub. <laughs> they pick all the big guys. Yeah. And every every now and then, if you can, just kick yourself in your own nuts. There you go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So so you pick the East Coast. So, you get you get four. I got four. Yeah. I walked around just some of the guys in the class that I got along well with. Most of them go East Coast. I'm like, if I get East Coast, it is. Yep. Got sent to SEAL Team Four. Checked in as a new guy, and the fun began. There it is. Bird so, bird so, cage. So, the bird in the bird cage. That's right. Because the bird in the bird cage. That's when SQTC qualification training started, which at the time um, I thought was a bad idea because I thought your platoon chief should give you a try to, but the now it's better the pipeline i think and you get it then you go to your team but the yeah. bird case uh, now i don't mean to brag but i was at team four when you checked in and i'm just yes. saying the yes. i'm just saying the bird cage i was in the group of dudes that came up with that idea just saying were you nice that's yes. a good idea but Are i don't know if you know this about cage? me i have a t- i have a tendency to take credit for everything <laughs> <laughs> why not just give it a shot <laughs> yeah yeah the, the moon landing i was there it's all good yep. um so uh um so team t- team two and then um i went over to green team right around oh four you checked in what what year was that so i checked in 2000 graduated november 2003 yeah i don't mean so to make you do all the math team. i'm so we'll, we'll we'll say it was early 2000s how about 2004 that? 2004 yeah. i because so, i think i was a master at arms when you checked in because i remember yeah. that because uh, i remember all the all the bud studs were showing up and i considered myself an old guy at like 28 and uh, there's no way I can, right. and I had to lead the PTs. My my two things was uh, lead the PTs, and then I was <clears throat> in charge of uh, cleanup at the end of the day. And I knew I knew that uh, I could not run you guys, and you could do more pushups than me. But I figured for PT, we're just gonna do about fifty five minutes of planks. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. So what was what was it like at Team Four? It was awesome, man. Loved it. Uh, had a great platoon. Just kept my mouth shut and good. absorbed as much as I could. I was I wanted to hit it hard. I luckily got comp school because I was a new guy and nobody wants to go to really comp school. Right. It fucking worked out great. I'm so glad I got picked to go there because then afterwards I had to kick and scream and fight to get sniper school. Yes. I really wanted sniper school. Nothing wrong with being a breacher, but sniper was my calling. It was just yep. hard to get. And I really had to fight for that one. And then once I got that, I got JTAC. And with those three. Oh, you're, yeah. They're, those are good calls because no matter what happens, they're taking you. Mm hmm. Because Maybe if you can get, if, if you can carry the radio, you can call on the and you can call on the jets. We're going to need you as a force multiplier. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So the first deployment, a little bit in Iraq, right? A little bit in Iraq doing personal security. It's pretty boring. It's a, it was a job, but yeah. I th- I think personal security is one of those things though that you want that to be boring. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely want that to be boring. Yeah, we don't need yeah. uh, we don't. I don't need a bunch of people shooting at the guy that I'm protecting who doesn't matter. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> this guy doesn't matter, and my mom told me that I was important. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. What do but I the, do so, here? But the, the, not to jump around too much. But the second pump. Now we're going to Sadr City with another platoon, right? Yep. Team four. I stayed in the same platoon, and then we went to Baghdad, and we were busy in Sadr City. And Sadr City, if people don't know, is a well, was not a very big square block area filled with million bad dudes i don't know there was quite a drastic number of like there were some fighters in solder city and this pretty small area of town and that was a uh, was one of my favorite things is driving through solder city and you hear the mini go, gun go off you just knew like somebody was fucked around and found out yeah yeah <laughs> you don't mess so around the, that minigun. 
Dude, no, the miniguns aren't are, are, are that's no bullshit. That see that the, the war in Iraq was weird because Sadr City, those were like Iranian Shiites, right? So it's a part so they're they're following a dude named Maktada al Sadr. They're being funded by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Al Qaeda in Iraq is Sunni, and they're they're having this lovely civil war because those <laughs> dudes knew that if they fought here, there's gonna be chaos, it's gonna fuck with the Americans. But I I've been to Sadr City, but you guys were doing straight up missions there, like driving through Sadr City. That is that like what is it like you at any moment you can blow up or or you get the feeling of any moment it's going to be on? What what does it feel or like? Or something like like that. Hopefully, never hitting an ID, which I know a lot of guys did. We were pretty fortunate. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Lots of infills, lots of operations, and yeah, I was a sniper at the time, so I would take try to get to the high ground and hold security from up there. Can you give an example? So so you would dr drive to a target and then you guys find a building, or do you have a setup? How's that work? We would do the intel, pick a target building, drive up, surround it, have blocking force, and then the assault team would go in, and I'd make myself up to the roof as a sniper as fast as, as possible. And nice. Hold scary from up there. It was good. It wasn't That's like... A... You know what we... I found? Climbing the high ground, holding security, that is an awesome spot to put in a dip. <laughs> it can be a good spot. It can also be a good it... spot to just hang out and see what happens. That, you know, there's all kinds of shit you can do. That's cool. Well, um, kind of shit, see. <laughs> and then, uh, so so Iraq's hot. You're there a couple times, and then uh, it's time to screen for Green Team to go over to SEAL Team 6, correct? Yes, it is. And that was quite the task, too. I had to kick and scream and beg for that because a lot of guys were signing up. And if everybody mass exits out of Team 4, who's going to mentor yeah. the new guys? And so it was hard. <clears throat> a lot of guys were wanting to go, and I had really had to push. I got... I asked so many times, I was told if I asked one more time, I'm getting reprimanded. I don't know what they were going to do to me. I asked one more time, different guy. It worked out. Shout out to that senior chief that hooked me up. Thank you so much. Good. That's, I, got to well, go. see, I, I know you, I've known you for a long time and I worked with you a lot and you're not a, you don't complain and you don't bitch. Um, so that, that's cool <laughs> that you, 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 I'm serious. You don't. Um, but that, that's, that's something to be able to keep pushing because you know where you want to go. So, so this senior chief, he, he just approved it. And then you're, you're off to green, what, like you screened and then, uh, you're going to go through in the summer of, of what? Second class of 08. Why do I keep asking you math problems? I'm so sorry. <laughs> it just takes me a second. I'm a little no, slow good, these days. <laughs> well, you have been yeah, blown so the fuck up. Me. So we'll, I'm sure that I'm sure the <laughs> listeners will give you a second. So, yeah, 2008. Oh, oh, 2008 okay right so um that, so the the first block in 08 was was that still skydiving no they switched it to cqb cqb but so mm. you can always you can always tell the older guys because we say cqb she just said cqb so listen up meets but uh <laughs> in in seal train selection to get to seal team six the historically the hardest block of training is cqb and the reason yeah. that is is because it's they they fine tune the tactics to a point where you're already in your own head before you go in the door. And uh, just the history of, yeah, you know, he got, cause it used to be skydiving first and then CQB and then you lose more than half the, the, the selection class because it's so hard, but it's, yeah. it's not really um, a test in tactics. It's a text in, can you screw up three different times in a row, get the fuck over, finish your job. Um, mm -hmm. What did, what did you think of CQB right off the bat? It was tough, man. You can be you made no mistakes. How well can you handle this pressure? Legit, while still thinking, and then it only progresses, and you better keep the fuck up because it's only going to get harder and harder and harder. And then these yep. people, the trains yep. moving, and you got to get to the fucking trains. The guys, moving. you got to yeah. So not only within the training block, these guys are fucking hitting it hard, and then not only are you working with these guys, you're working to get to the guys in the rafters, and those motherfuckers don't mess around. They don't so fuck it's around. Like, great. You drip it through the fire hose and everything has to be absolutely perfect. And it perfect. Was, and it's, so it's like going through buds again, but I'd much rather go through buds again. This is performance based. And they also kick you in the nuts because you got to call stress in some way. They're not really going to shoot at you. So you're still getting your nuts kicked in. They're making it difficult, but you better fucking perform at the highest level possible yeah. period or bye. But the good, the good news is at least you get to shake the dust off every morning at four with like a 10 mile run. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, oh you shit. you got you. you. <laughs> Green team was so fucking chaotic. I I mean, I remember in CQB went through with Shaw's and in in, in uh, Mississippi and like you could be having breakfast with a dude 
And then you got you know, a dude right next to you. Then you got house runs and then lunch. And that guy's gone and you never fucking see him again ever in your exactly. life. Like he's gone. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's uh, for me, I remember like you could be having the best run in the world. This is easy. I got this. By the third run, they have you carrying a broom because they tell you you're too dangerous to see how you handle the mistake that they both know you didn't make. Mm -hmm. Just fucking chaos. But um, hey, yeah. But what I what I remember looking at me personally, this is not my interview, but uh, because to, I mean, there is such a difference between a buds instructor and a green team cadre guy. Just the the different, um, like I'll kick you out of SEAL training, but this guy will ruin your life. <laughs> like, <shit. laughs> and there was, but I what I remember my big motivation too is you would see the patches. You know, you got the guys with the they got the red man, you got the bones, you got the 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 gold uh, the lion. Uh, we didn't have silver at the time, but like seeing those dudes in the Raptors, I was like, I want that patch. That's that's sure. kick ass. Yeah, a hundred percent. So, oh, um, yeah. but but CQB, you get CQB to me. I thought was kind of like hell week. Like you get through that, you're probably going to make it through green team, which means what, what we called it was the second deck. I might make it to the second deck, and that's where the shooters are. What do you think? Yep, CQB was definitely the toughest part. I'm not a big jumper, so jumping, I had a few hiccups there, but I ended up great. They were great instructors, obviously, the people putting you through it. They were training mm -hmm. you. So by the end of it, I felt, you know, I wasn't the best jumper in the class by any means, but I was confident enough to be safe in the sky. In the so, beginning, it was a little rough. Yeah. What was terrible. what was the worst part? Like the uh, the anticipation up to the jump or opening? Oh, was that anticipation. Uh, the flights up were the worst for me. But then some of the performance, I forget which, just a couple of uh, everything has to be done perfectly, just like CQB. So my turns, maybe yep. my exit was a little unstable. I don't know, but yep. I had a. I had just a couple of like, all right, man, clean your shit up a little bit. And then that was just in the very beginning. And then once I got comfortable skydiving, I was like, okay, just do your yeah. box, man. Keep it simple. That's it. It wasn't that. Yeah. Look before you turn, keep it simple, going through clouds, mm -hmm. just go maintain your heading, all that. I remember when we went through that, um, we would go to, we, we, you know, cause we weren't even at the point where uh, we were, we were actually doing night jumps at night, not in the morning. Because we hadn't learned at the at the at the time, it's actually smarter to do your night jumps early in the morning. Because if you lose a dude, you have all day to find him. Right. But we were doing, yeah. and as soon as we got done with our night jump, we'd all go get a steak because this could be our last meal. Let's get a steak again. Yep. <laughs> you never know. During the green team, we had one guy have a malfunction, a horseshoe at eighteen or whatever, pretty high up, whatever it was. Definitely, yeah. Anyway, so he had some time to work out the issue, but so we're in green team doing one of our <clears throat> pass or fail jumps and you know he's checking in and he comes over horseshoe malfunction gonna try to get it away and you're just sitting there floating in green team and you're like fuck and then your buddy's falling and panic he wasn't panicking but he's like i'm in a fucking situation then he comes over the radio he's like i got it off oh my good. god he landed safely he was right on the next bird up like jeez that, that i see i'd heard that story i didn't know whose class that was that was because i'd heard like he came over the radio and he's telling you was like <laughs> we can't do anything this is kind of on you bro and, yep, you're, you're your and own for, commander and he fixed it <laughs> <laughs> for, for those who don't know what a, hor a horseshoe malfunction is the, basically the worst one you can get a horseshoe is when yeah. you know you so your 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 parachute comes off your back uh in a bunch <laughs> of, of lines that connect to riders connect you to your harness but we jump with so much shit that if one of those lines wraps, your chute doesn't open and you can't necessarily cut it away because it might be hooked on something. <laughs> and then your reserves going into that. And the mm -hmm. only good news in that situation is you're going to land. But um, <laughs> I love he's, he comes up on the radio. It's like, all right, well let us know how this ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I think someone is like one's up, two's up three. I got a horseshoe malfunction. Four's up. <laughs> He's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's, uh. Well, I mean, and even and it's funny how the tactics are constantly developing because when, when we were a red team together, we would put the lead. I was the lead jumper. And then you put another lead jumper in the rear and the, the rear guy can actually just watch the entire stack. Like we were, were you on the jump with us when, when we had the Air Force guy that um, it was a day jump and the bundle guy saw him and uh and the the bundle the bundle guy's up and he goes, hey man, you got a you got a you got a line over, you need to cut it away. And he goes, no, um, I, no, I'm not going to cut this. It's like, look, dude, we're getting lower, <laughs> cut it now. And he's and you hear it you, over the radio, you just hear him go, oh, oh okay. Yeah. And then he cuts it away, and you hear, I'm back, motherfucker. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the same jump. We almost got hit by that plane. 
<laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, but again, getting ahead of ourselves. So you you finished green team now. Did they do? Did they do uh, dream sheets, or did they just kind of the squadrons pick you? I think they might have done a dream sheet. Yeah. Did you want to go to red? I did. Why? Because we had hung out quite a bit. I just, I knew, yeah. I, I knew you. It, any, it could have gone anywhere. Don't get me wrong, but it just felt like I. Knew oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then once we got, <clears throat> y'all got back from that Iraq deployment, right when I was screening, and I got to stand there and watch the presentation about how well y'all operated in Iraq and all the stuff y'all accomplished. And I was looking at the fucking PowerPoint and I'm like, that's, yeah, that's we, fucking legit. We just <laughs> finished the, we just finished the greatest summer I've ever lived through in uh, Bakuba, Iraq. And that, I mean, the only thing we didn't do on that deployment was shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, was, dude, uh, it was, it was, that was because that was the summer where uh, they decided to take the gloves off and have the awakening. If we kill enough, Sunni terrorists, the rest of the Sunnis will give up or give them in. And, uh, and y'all put a big, you know, it kind of it went that way for a while. That was craziness. So mm-hmm. red team, it is. What do you remember checking into to red squadron? Anything good? It was just, it was great. Everybody was very accepting. It was kind yeah. of like, everybody's very happy to see you. Sure. A little bit of fuckery here and there, but it wasn't like a lot. It was, Kind of like, are you these guys setting me up? Like, they're just being really nice to me right now. And eventually, y'all are going to give me a happy hat. Like, but what it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I, I think that the, I found the same thing. It was like, now it's big boy rules. Um, now it's big boy rules. And I remember, too, like, because, you know, the new guy, the meat stick, all that shit at the teal teams. Here, it's like, you're not, look, you're not a new guy. You're a newer guy. You, you've been around. You've done your shit. You've been through green team. Welcome to it. And there's no point. Like, you've already proven you can fucking be here. So, uh, you came up exactly. second deck, red team, and then uh, what was our first deployment? Where'd we go? Because that was after Bakuba. We yeah. went over to Afghanistan, right? Or did you go? To, where'd you go? Yeah, I went to Kandahar. Can- oh, shit. That was Kandahar. That was a good one. Yeah, that it was on there. And that, yeah. so we're talking right, right around, what's that, 2008? 2000. What? I keep doing this to you. What's I'm... 2008 minus 2007? Okay, what? Sorry. Because I graduated, I got there in December of 2008. So we deployed 2009. And I think that's. No, so it must have been the end of 2008 because Fafco died in 2008. Yes. So, it's Fafco, yeah. so I guess it was 2008. When we were, we, so 2008 maybe. was – now, again, my math's all fucked up here too, but which which Falco was killed on – what was he doing there? Which one was that? <clears throat> he died June 2008. Okay. Well, and well, he well, was going well, after – that was in Kandahar because I was mm-hmm. supposed to get him. First deployment, got to get a job. Saw the value in the dogs in that deployment, using them every night. Wanted to like, fuck yeah, I love dogs. As soon as I expressed that, I was told I'd be going to handler school. And then I was also told I'd be getting Falco when we returned. Falco was going after those guys in the ditch. Yep. As soon as he latched on, the other guy blasted Falco and he wasn't able to pull through. But he also showed allowed those guys to show their hand to where he nobody saved lives. really get injured. He saved lives for sure. But he died. This so is the was, this is the I didn't know that. This is the first time I'd heard that Falco was going to be your dog. Falco was supposed to be my dog. I don't want to say his name, but the MA that was handling him, awesome guy. He wasn't he wasn't having Falco anymore. <clears throat> so I was like, sure, I'll take Falco. But since Falco died, we got back from that deployment and had to buy trip, come back with a whole new group of dogs, go through the selection, and then pace or piece up the handlers with the dog with the right personality, and then send them to the handler school. So did, is that when you got Cairo? That's when I got Cairo. Yep. See, that just that just gave me goosebumps. That's when I got Cairo. So it sucks we lost Falco. Falco paid the ultimate price. He was a great dog. Remember we had that issue with him in the beginning? I don't know if you remember, but Yeah, I do. He wasn't he, he was going to bark and hold. Mm-hmm. And we're like, shit, he's gonna get blasted. He ain't gonna make it. And then all of a sudden he figured it out and he ragged all that guy in the fucking weeds. And we come back and it was never an issue again. Falco turned into a fucking monster. <laughs> he was a monster, yeah. That's so crazy. Monster. That is so crazy, though. This, I mean, again, I have goosebumps right now. Because of what Falco did and because of the dog he was and the lives he saved, the way he died, he's the reason that we, I mean, you did, but we as a team got Cairo. Yes. Yeah. And I think personally, I'm not, I'm not saying this just because you're here. Cairo, I think, is the greatest military working dog that has ever worked. 
I got really fortunate with Cairo. Oh, we had yeah. a lot of great dogs. We were our squadron, especially. And then oh, nothing, there's no, 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 no doubt about it. No, I just, I'm some just partial to Cairo. Right, of course, me too. Was uh, some of the other dogs might get a, a happy nip here and there. With none of none of our dogs really would, you know, you see your whole security at the doorway, and he, as he runs by, he yeah, I get you. Uh, we didn't really <laughs> have that issue. And then all the dogs that we had were great, but some of the dogs were like, mm, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to get too close to your face. With Cairo, it was like. Remember, he got to be part of the Christmas party until yeah, I remember. Space. Yeah, he was having popping balloons, running around. So it wasn't like I really got, you know, you got to watch him. Yeah. But it's Cairo. He's around the boys, all his uncles. Everybody's on the couch playing with him, hop up. And it's not as like with some of the dogs, it's like, mm, I'm not doing that with Yari. Maybe a little bit, but it's not the same. With Cairo, yeah. it was like, yeah, he's cool. Until yeah. What's His Face came out in the skit in the Haji uniform. Do you remember during the Christmas party somebody came oh, yeah. out dressed in the oh, yeah. and it was like oh, boy no <laughs> so we say to the dog, no no kind of <laughs> run motherfucker but, but uh, ex- explain explain the um can you explain the relationship between the handler the dog and the team how how does that work and as far as the dog the dog thinks as far as dog <clears throat> Cairo was mine I was his dad everybody else is the uncle and uh. So say I do go down, <clears throat> it was as soon as you go through dog training school, good job. You should have a good relationship with the dog by then. You get to the squadron. You start off with all new guys, handlers, trainers, and then you just do crawl, crawl walk, run through the house. Start with the muzzle, single gunshots, weaving through legs, eventually take the muzzle off. And once you get it comfortable enough, it's like, all right, bring in the whole squadron. And then usually by then they're just weaving through legs and they're part of, so then all the uncles he starts to get to know and it just builds that. So, but if we're on a target and I go down, I get shot. Every single person on that squadron knows how to put authority into controlling that dog. Cause if not, that dog's probably going to walk all over you. I go down, that dog's still an asset. You, yes. especially a smart team leader like you would fucking know that you'd either delegate or you would pick that thing up and just sit, immediately know you're the fucking team leader. I'm running Ish, send the dog yourself or pass the dog off. Anybody on the team should be able to pick the dog up. Cheese, he's dead or he's down, whatever the fuck sucks. Pick up the dog. The dog's good. If you don't give them direction, especially some of those high intense dogs, they might be eating your ass. Their handler's down. Yep. Shit's going wrong. You better know what you're doing and everybody on the team did. So that was pretty cool. Actually, That's some- a, That is a badass way to uh, describe how, how that works. And with, with Cairo, I mean, Cairo made it easy t- for that. Like Cairo really <laughs> knew Cairo knew what he was doing. Like he, he, like you said too, cause we were able to have Cairo. Um, my, my experience is, you know, when the dog puts on um, the dog puts on his gear, you're not petting the dog. He's he's, we're all here to work when it's, when it's off, then we can play. And you know, he gets a tennis ball. He likes that more than the treat and he can hang yep. out to watch movies. Some dogs wouldn't like that. What what was that? We had a dog in uh, uh, Sharana and yeah. um that fucker was mean as shit. And I remember so was it Renzo? I think it was Renzo. Well, you something like that. But I remember like he was a uh, mean fucker. And like he he was <laughs> he had to be muzzled around us. And I remember one time we were watching a movie. He came at me, but he had a muzzle yeah. on him. Like if he didn't have that on, my face would be gone. Yeah. This Stuff dog's like maniacal. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. you never know. So so that he couldn't he didn't have the switch. You know, he couldn't turn no. that switch off. He was, was just on. on. Because Ky- Cairo, he, he did have the switch too, and I actually have a picture. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I looked it up. You took of me when we went to, uh, we did the realistic urban training in San Antonio on the Riverwalk, yes, yeah. and that was and a cool hotel. Did. We had it, we had a, we had it mm-hmm. locked up there, and uh, me and Cairo yep. on the bed chilling. He, he was, he was able to do that with us. That was great. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, so I got lucky with him. Yes, Cairo was the best, and so what a lot of people don't know is, so Cairo was the dog on the Bin Laden raid, but. He'd been on a lot of missions before, and he had actually been shot. And I was on that mission with you. Um, I can, because I remember it was a vehicle interdiction on a mountain, right? Do you remember that? Two mopeds split. Yeah, and so my my team went off to the left, and you guys went down. So I wasn't with you. We were we were trying to flank the guys because we for some weird reason because you know have the perfect plan. It's awesome, but once you get there, it could turn to shit. We we had the low ground. My team went left to flank, and you guys went down. What went down when you were with Cairo? How'd that go? So we made our way up, landed safe, made our way up. There was a little low brick wall, nothing crazy, but enough. It was something. 
we all lined up against it. I positioned myself with a, the wind to my advantage, and then I just went up to the team leader. Escalation of force, trying to get him to comply. They had found the tree line, you know, which was nothing but open desert, and then there's one fucking tree line they happened to find. Cool. They're not listening. <clears throat> escalation, escalation. Finally, the dog, it was called, team leader called to send the dog in. Send him in. So it was pretty thick veg. I had a strobe on, but I lost it. So he's going in. I'm trying to make my way down the line of guys and still keep an eye on them, but I lose the strobe. And then all of a sudden I start hearing AK fire. And there's a distinct difference between our fire and AK fire. Yes. And this isn't the first time we've played this game. Yep. I know what's happening. Shit. Immediately start recalling. And Cairo, as we discussed, was solid. He could recall. He was always like, – he made my job easy, like you said. Yes. So when he wasn't recalling fast and I wasn't seeing that strobe, I heard that fire. It's like, fuck, this isn't what I'm used to. Like, I'm starting to get worried. So like I said, there was a low wall, and I think that low wall went all the way in front of the tree line where we were, and then it cut off to the left-hand side. <clears throat> I think eventually, what seemed like an eternity, he finally, I can see him making his way down to the very far left. And I think just somehow he maybe went around, skirted, and found a, a break in the wall he could hop over because he had been shot through his chest. And he even shot through his arm. Can't remember. I think it was his left arm. Anyways, I don't think he could hop back over. It wasn't a high wall, but I just don't think he could. I mean, shot through the leg. So and I think eventually, and the chest, and the front arm, right? Like, so eventually he was able to make his way around the long way somehow. And I see him coming towards me. And I'm like, fuck yeah, there he is. He's moving not fast. And then all of a sudden, as I'm moving, he collapses. And that's when uh, that just. It was that weird feeling of where, you know, in training, they always say, if your teammate falls in front of you in the door, step over him, finish the job. And it was weird. Like, it crushed me for a second because mountain walls, or mountain walls, they're a thousand miles an hour. That dog will never just drop unless he's no. dead. Yes. They're mountain walls. So when I saw that, he's fucking dead. And it was weird to, like, it crushed me for a second, shit, and then it just all shut off because it's like, Okay, well, he's dead. Like, there's bad guys literally right there trying to kill us. It would crush me. It was just weird to, uh, to see that or feel that cut off of emotion. Like, it's done. I still cared about him, but it was just like, oh, fuck, he's dead. It crushed me. What else do we got to do? Luckily, we knew the scenario. There's two guys in the fucking tree line. There's 10, 15 other pipe pit motherfuckers on yeah. the line. Oh, and that crew? Fuck yeah, there were. There's some that pipe hit motherfuckers. So I was like, okay, get to the fight. I don't need to get to the fight. Like, what the fuck am I getting? Y'all got it. So I run right over to him and I get to him and he's still breathing. He just collapsed. So he obviously is fucked up pretty good. And I'm just like, all right, well, hope came back. He's like, he is a Malinois. He's still breathing. They're tough as shit. Another guy that was a medic on the team, you know, yep. he, I, <clears throat> I went over the radio did the sign where, you know, Cairo's down. As soon as he heard it, he knew that there was plenty of guys up on the line. He had done whatever he needed to do. As soon as he heard the call, he runs back. And it was, that was another really cool thing to see from, he's just a dog, but to us, he's our fucking teammate. He's, he's part brother, of our man. team. He's, part of, he's a brother. And so people hear this, they think, oh, it's just a dog, but for us, it's different. No, no. Our teammate's down. So going from an, I say, catastrophic incident, like, shit. All of a sudden, all that teamwork and all that training that we had done over the years, of countless iterations, was fucking flawless, man. He runs back. You know, Cairo had his own specific medical kit. I had mine. We have one for the dog. I, as soon as I get it out, I toss it to him, and I'm getting Cairo's gear off him. Literally, yep. as I'm sliding the muzzle on him, he's already got his hand inside of his chest. And Cairo was laid back, but you put your fingers in his chest, it's going to hurt. He's trying to get him so it's like literally as soon as i slip that muzzle on he's like ah yelling in pain he's stuffing the whole gunshot wound in the chest of cairo and then uh, as soon as he was able to stop the bleed the head shed knew the fucking deal they had already made the call for the bird to come in and pick him up so it was like flawless fucking teamwork handing him the gear getting the gear off he's already stuffed we stopped the bleed shit i look up the helicopter's landing because the leadership was fucking awesome load him up on the bird they're working on him on the bird. We get him back to Sharana. Uh, we're Where in we Sharana. Were. Yeah, we're in Sharana. The doc's there, which we didn't have vet staff. So the doctor's no. there. 
didn't have to work on him, but they did. And they, they did fixed his ass. He wasn't a bad, he wasn't doing so good. They had to actually stick tubes in both lungs. They had to trach him. They had Jesus. a gunshot through his arm that they ended up finding afterwards we didn't know about. And then obviously the one in his chest. And they busted their ass, saving his life, getting him stable. We flew him straight to Bath. And then the vet staff at Bath just crushed it and saved him. I didn't think he was going to pull through. I laid there with him no. literally like the whole night sleeping on the floor I wake up in the morning and look at him and he's still there. And it's like, okay. Yeah. It was crazy. The, 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 the goal in 20, that is just, that is such a, just, I mean, that, that just put that, that chain of events. So you got your teammate, you're in the fight. You got other teammates in a fight. The dog does his thing. He gets hit, comes back. You realize your teammates down. We got to, you know, win the fight, but that's the first thing you do medically. Uh, as soon as you get back, the pipe is doing the, the. I know damn well who the guy is. He used to be a corpsman. He runs back, does everything from the. He's he's working on it. Get the working on the uh, the sucking chest wound. The, the head shed was so locked on. They got the kick ass pilots coming in, d- d- getting back with the dog to the surgeons. They're the god. They don't need to do it. They're working on the dog. Get them stabilized. I mean, just think of think of the, the caliber of a team. That that is why. That is why you you train for contingencies because that is what the preparation can do. That I mean, that's just because mm-hmm. I was on a different side of the mountain. From my point perspective, we're we're in a gunfight too. We just killed two of those fuckers, and um, I heard that call that uh, you know we knew something was down, and and I I was waiting for a call sign because we're not saying names, and and someone said Cairo, and it was I, heard, I think I heard someone say catastrophic. I'm like, well, he's a dog, man, and he's not wearing body armor. He gets you get shot in the chest with AK, you're fucking dead. So I was considering you know, Cairo. Yep. he's gone. Got, you know, we'll have a we drink. For him. And yeah, then, we uh, like, plenty of times. and and then you get back and he's alive. He's alive. Shout out to the pilots too. Can't forget them. So well, no, I didn't know. I mentioned that yeah, dude, the pilots yeah, yeah. right on time. Too. That's it's incredible. Just the, uh, the, the, well, like what, not to jump too far ahead, but when you give your keynote speeches, one of your points is the effect of communication. And that's exactly what that is. Say what you're saying. There's your message. Stop yelling. hundred percent. Make it clear. And, they didn't have to come in. It, it wasn't like a hot, hot LZ, but they're still risking their dog coming in while we're in a firefight. To there's save a gun. The dog. There's two different gunfights going on. That's a, that's. Not, I mean, right. The only and thing they, we're not taking is indirect fire. Right, and they're still hung it out for us, which was fucking hats that's off. That's so what I meant fucking to say. cool. I always say thank you to those guys. Yeah, huge shot. The pilots. Don't, I mean, and the, they're the most professional guys out there, and they don't get any oh, credit at all. <laughs> Isn't that that's insane? They do when I'm talking. And I'm sure. I'm looking over your shoulder. If if people are just listening, um, I can see it over your shoulder. Explain explain that harness that's behind you. That is Cairo's harness. He was shot in, and this is the same harness he wore on the Bin Laden mission. So he almost died in that harness, and saved the world in it. <laughs> How about that? Is insane. And I mean, and so then so, that so I mean, that, <laughs> that's insane. And that's 08. and uh, and then. And then uh, that's correct. When you got shot, it was two thousand eight, right? Yes, because what did we lose? Uh, well, I'm just doing the timeline the... because because now we got oh nine coming up, and right around oh nine in April, right on my birthday, something else happened that we were involved with. That's right. So we lost Remco. Once Rem- once we lost Remco, then Cairo got shot immediately after that. So I'm trying to think of the time. I think it was then. Yeah, yeah. He he got shot. Yep. I don't know. So he's no, but what I was getting at was that he's healing up, and then we have to uh, we get a we get a call to go kill some people on Easter, and then we did do that. Yeah, once he was shot, we got our filler dog Bronco. So we worked in Bronco until the end of that deployment. Went back home, and then Easter Sunday started kicking off. Easter Sunday, that's mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. Uh, the Maersk Alabama was taken by our good friends in Somalia. Sure, shit sure was. The old and Tom Hanks. I remember. I remember because the. Uh, as cool as I like to make it sound, we kind of knew it was coming because yeah. they had taken the thing and uh, we knew the state department was negotiating, but we're probably going to get the call. And um, we did, I was at uh, my daughter's uh, Easter tea party at her preschool. And then we get the the buzz, yeah. the, the no shit. That's, I mean, this is not the first time we'd been recalled to do a jump. I, I don't think it, I don't know if a jump had ever happened before, but this is the first time it actually went from soup to nuts. Yep. This was the first time for me. Yeah. So that's, and what we're just, I know, and this is one of the sensitive parts where I don't want to talk about the timeline or whatever and how we did whatever, but uh, 
right. again, what, for the Captain Phillips mission, watching the entire team come together. I'm talking about the the mechanics who got made sure the trucks worked that are pulling the boats and the riggers who did the shoots to the 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 guys flying the plane that brings the thing and then the all the shit comes together and then we got to fly across on a mission that we um we didn't train we didn't train for because it had never been done from two, from 1980 to 2009 we had never thought of a fully engulfed lifeboat being towed by a US navy destroyer but here we are now what but here we are <laughs> yep <laughs> And I'm I don't think I don't think our plan I don't think our plan was for the snipers to uh to to do that, but they did it. And that was it. <laughs> they nailed it, <laughs> literally. <laughs> they, oh, no, man. they nailed it. What, what the funny part too, though, because like the movie Captain Phillips is is awesome. Um, yeah. but we never thought about because always whatever you don't think of because it's probably gonna happen. What what, what mm -hmm. amazed me is after the Phillips raid, nobody ever thought of how do we get the assaulters home. So we went to uh yeah. we went to Cutter, didn't we? Yeah, we did. It took a minute. It took a second because we went over there. With, I, I remember I, I, all I had was what I jumped with, so I didn't have any clothes. And I went, we got that um, re relief fund and spent cash at the fake Oakley store. Yeah. Yeah. We had to kill some time on that boat. The weight room. I remember I wasn't the chief yet and we were so bored on the boat. I'm like, I was just following you around with your buddies and my like, hey, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm coming to the chief's mess with you. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> You're like, yeah, of course, come to the chief's mess. I'm like, I think they'll allow it. <laughs> at first i was like mm. and then i'm like hey dude i'm coming with you you're like fuck yeah you're coming with me like yeah come on man like the chief dude i wasn't gonna tell that part of the story that's like big no-no shit big navy yeah but we were there for a cool job and i think they they were all happy with it they were like, cool on. about it too well that you know it's funny cool. that, that's that's my first time in the chief's mess too because i had just made chief <laughs> okay and then, yeah, nice. but i'll tell you what though there there was never uh there, you know, one of my favorite places in the world is the chief's club on a navy base that was a blast yeah but um yeah, yeah so times. the that was fun. Virginia Beach, the ready room, all that shit. <laughs> mm, we had some good times at the ready room. <laughs> oh my god! I think one of the, the one of the problems oh with being with being <laughs> that close to the sun is all you know is Navy SEALs, Navy SEALs w wives and girlfriends, and bartenders. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, but but here now here's a, other than that. here's a here's a quick one for you though. Um, the ready room is fa is famous because that's where Charlie Sheen was playing Hawkins and he beat up that guy. That's the ready room, that bar, right? Oh yeah. I and uh, that. If, you, if you look over my shoulder, that is signed by Admiral Hawkins. Cause he eventually okay. made Admiral. He was a JG in the movie. That's Sheen back there. Pretty funny. That's how, you know, That's the funny. circle of life. So, all right. So, yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, a lot of time at red team, top of the world. We did, I, we did another, another, two more deployments. Cause I remember I was the, I was leading um, the outstation in JBAT or whatever. It's 2011. We get back. I'm skipping ahead a little bit because not a lot of exciting shit happens. 2011, yeah. and then we get a call because the way it was told to me is they found a thing, and this thing is in a house, and this house is in a bowl. This bowl's in a country. You're gonna go yeah. get this thing, bring it back to us, and and um, it show weird. it to us. You mind if uh, can we pause for one second? Yeah, go go ahead. Just one quick pause. Sorry, buddy. No problem. Oh we can edit the shit out of this. <clears throat> so um. I don't see what we, so we had just finished a deployment. This is right around March of 2011 and we'd have been spread. We'd been spread out. I, I was in Miami because that's where we go diving. Yep. <laughs> and other I, guys went to other guys were in Vegas because that's, that's where you go rock climbing. <laughs> yep. I was what in Miami you? for a bit. Yeah, You, you were with I us. Love I remember that. that. Trip. that we were having a great time about, on that trip. We were having a great time. I was so depressed when I left that trip. I was like, pissy pants we were having a great time and i had to, you know what i had to go to free fall jump master in yuma and i left my Annie. i remember oh. that that's right that's right uh. because there was a no i think we had that conversation because that, we were talking about a leadership billet and you got free fall jm and, and that leadership billet <laughs> and you got to take it for because we're because you, you know we're both going to be in the navy for 30 years you got to get this to make <laughs> right. i remember it. having that conversation because we're at the courtyard yeah. marriott on um on miami beach right Dude, it was epic. You would just wake up in the morning, go for a run on the boardwalk. We go dive all day. Go, God, just go out in the awesome. water. And, Dude, we had we had little... we had a gym down the street. Some of the dudes ran into Anna Kornikova. <laughs> like it's it's winter ish in spring in. Oh, it was perfect. Florida. Oh God, that little that was restaurant awesome. bar right there on the water. Right out there on the water. Man, that was awesome every night. And like legit, we worked. We were working tactics, working dive oh, we tactics. Were. I remember I seeing those. We were those spent. 
dude, those big, big, uh, big ass groupers out there that you're convinced are great white sharks, even though they're yeah. not in there. <laughs> that was right. fun too. That was it too. Because like top of the world, 2011, the, the wars are basically over. We got shit. Cairo's right. alive. <laughs> Everything's fine. Uh, yeah, because when because yep. I remember we went out there. I was with the with the boss and um, a couple. I think you were out there. And no, you were out to go to Yuma. Th whatever. And we got uh, we got called back and we're like, well, fuck, we got to leave. We don't. And we'll because okay, I remember the this this the um the trip's going to be fun. We were planning the trip on deployment. Like we're going to Miami, which is great because <laughs> you know finish a war deployment, two weeks to the fam. <laughs> we're going working in Miami. And but the only shitty thing yeah. is it was such a cool trip that the this commanding officer and the command master chief were going to come with us. We're like, well, fuck, whatever. But we're still but working. They, but but they didn't come okay. because okay. they got recalled to DC right. and we didn't know why. And so we're like, well, now this this trip just got amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but they got <laughs> called up there by Admiral Bill McRaven because he's reading them in on something big that's going on. We didn't know that. That's and right. So, you went out to Yuma. We a couple of us got called back, and we're like, "What is this?" And nobody knew. And then uh, mm -hmm. I think we got a brief before you got back. And here's again the butterfly effect. With all due respect, you're getting on the big raid because you can handle the best dog we have, right? Yep, that's the reason I was chosen. But of... no, no. I mean, if I had a say, I'm picking and... you. Just, just letting you know. Right. We were, we were a great team. We worked. Yeah. We worked real good together. I know. Uh -huh. I we know. We just that... got back and. But uh, yeah, but uh, so uh, so we're back there. They won't tell us what the fuck's happening. You came in like a day after after us. You didn't know what was going on. Nope. And then, um, wh what were you thinking at the time? Because you're in free fall jam and you get pulled. I don't give a shit. We're, we're always doing something. I'm like, what? Do, we were always spinning up on something. Like, what are we gonna go do? Like, I don't give a shit. I'm with the people that I love. We're gonna yeah. go do some cool shit. We'll see what it is. It's a surprise. I, mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm 20 something <laughs> years old. I'm 28. I don't give a fuck. Let's go. I mean, I'm either going to work with the people I love or die with the people I love. Let's fucking do this. I'm in either way. Let's do this. So, but I remember being <laughs> in free fall. <laughs> it was just me and Nick. So I was like, well, free fall in Yuma, Joe Master, it might not be the funnest course. But I was, oh, I was there with Nick. So Nick, Nick check. check. Oh, uh, fucking one of the best the, dudes. Nick check, man. What a great dudes. dude. So I was like, all right, at least if I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here with one of my fucking best friends and we're going to have a good time. Oh, and you, I'll tell you what, Nick Check knew how to have a good time. You had to have a good fucking time. So that was what I was very excited about, getting some alone time basically with one of my best friends. Yes. And then all of a sudden, a couple days in, a day in, our team leader calls, my team leader. Mm -hmm. says, I got you a plane ticket. Go check out Jumpmaster. Be on that flight. And then I'll come to the team room the next day, grab Cairo, come to the team room, I think is what he said. I was like, cool, whatever. No more questions. It's like, <laughs> my team down. says, come, let's go. So I go up. You guys hanging out? I'll hang out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm in. I go up to Nick and I'm like, hey, man, we're getting called back. And Nick was like, nope. Like, I don't, you nobody called me. And I was like, and it was just really weird to me because Nick, I know we say he's a solid, solid operator, but he really was. Like, Nick was bad motherfucker he was oh, he was solid, solid in every operator. every possible way he was excellent he was excellent and so when it was weird to me when i said that to him and he wasn't going but i was going i'm like well you're way better than i am why am i getting called back and you're not it was just weird i was like yes well, fuck you asshole have fun and jump master by yourself <laughs> bye motherfucker <laughs> slap him in the face <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so funny I off, and another pretty funny thing happened so i go up to the instructors in the classroom and i'm like hey my boss called i'm getting called home i don't know what's going on but i'm just getting called home i got a plane tonight and they just looked so baffled like yes you can't leave the school like this isn't you this isn't it was just like they couldn't compute and i'm like no i gotta go and like, all right, well, you have to go check out with the, the big boss. I forget who, whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. I'll go down to the coming building. I, I run down to the building. Secretary's like, he's out at lunch. And I'm like, I got to, my flight. team, my team leader booked me a flight that I had to be on. And I'm like, could you just leave him a note and tell him to, I had to leave, call my boss. <laughs> and I left him <laughs> the team leader's number. <laughs> and then slapped her in the face. <laughs> slapped her in the face. Bow, motherfucker. <laughs> I, what, where'd that dude from Virginia go? I don't know, but he came in here just slapping so, the shit out of people. Just, 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 so <laughs> Nick got me back the next day. I guess everybody in the classroom, because it's filled up with oh my God. Army, Marines, yes. Air Force. And they go, what happened to your SEAL friend? And Nick, he quit. <laughs> 
motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that, I forgot that story. I remember he said that because actually Nick yeah. Check was in my team at the time. And and um, well, yeah, yeah, that's right. And he said, he said, he <laughs> what happened to your seal? He quit. <laughs> that, that's that story right there the simplicity how funny that is because because he was such a serious looking dude but he's yeah. funny as shit and just because yep. all the stuff the seals are famous for <laughs> it, one of them is not quitting and <laughs> just we just that's all he said yep <laughs> quit. Bye. yep he quit <laughs> so oh that's uh-huh. funny so the, the and, and 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 free fall jump master is a no bullshit school like that's a that's a yeah. big time leadership school very hard school too you got to oh, yeah. get through the uh mm-hmm. but now you so you come back and then um we're in the new building with, and you know i remember having a conversation with you about how shitty the new building was because they had already yeah. started to go green remember trying to shave with those shitty little sinks uh-huh like the old that's the why old we didn't want to shave the old building you can just shave well if you want to shave but like you can't how are you going to shave with that little pissy fucking green energy right. bullshit so it was anyway, completely so different yeah we made so, the switch yep. so we're in the new joint and uh i because now we but i mean you got to admit the team rooms are pretty tight those are nice spaces and they, were nice. they had us like they had us back in the commanding officers thing or whatever when and we were like we still didn't know what the fuck we're doing and right. other guys that that weren't on the mission were asking us what we're doing and we're like right how do they re- how, what did you think when you got back from that was the weirdest Yuma? situation i've ever been in in the team room when i walk in it's like i'm home all the guys are here what's up motherfuckers and then it was kind of like the team leaders were like okay we're gonna go to the back and i'm like huh what's everybody else doing anyways it was just it was a little different dynamic to where they every people were separated and just like and we didn't know what was going on so when people were other people were asking like what's going on i'm like Fuck, i don't know like, what are you doing in the back? Like, I don't fucking know. So it was a little different dynamic because you're just used to saying, hey, everybody in the team room, like, what are we doing? But so that was a little different. And then we started I traveling th- a little bit. I think that that was, um, that was actually part of the, the, the divide in morale, I think. I mean, I'm talking the entire, the entire SEAL Team 6 place because what I saw is – so at this point we got four four squadrons, you know, and um, but every dude there had been through buds, had been through the teams, had been through green team, had been to war. You're a tier one unit, but now we're taking the not necessarily we're not taking the best, but we're we're taking this group of a tier one unit, but not this group. And now mm-hmm. this group's asking them what's going on. We're not allowed to say, and we don't know. So right. when they ask us, like, you remember, like the lunch breaks, snack breaks, like, what are you guys talking about? Like, I don't know, because they were te- at first. I don't know if you were there at first. They told us like, if we're we're going up to like Alaska and there's pipelines to Pipeline. Japan. It's like, what the fuck? Right. Are you, what the? It fuck was are weird. You? I was like, oh, okay. and then, well, all right. I mean, <laughs> when are we sure. going now? <laughs> all, right. all right. And then, but that what did what would it, it was like a weird and like because I remember going like to my cage and a buddy from uh gold team came up he's like wait what are you guys doing i'm like i don't know and he goes come on you can we went through green team you can tell me i'm like i don't know what the fuck is going on i don't know and then it was like the thing that was told was some shit with the pipeline underwater i'm like all right cool we'll figure this out should hopefully be kind of fun but it's didn't sit right with me i'm like just a little confused but like all right cool and then do i go to pipeline school before we go to right (laughs) Right. (laughs) it's like i guess we'll figure it out yeah and then that's when it started to come to it's like oh okay well it's sort of because i remember talking to some of us like okay we're going to libya that's this that's libya definitely um arab spring Gaddafi. okay that's what we're doing but but like because for me it was like um when they said okay we're not bringing pjs we're not bringing cct it's all seal so if you used to be a radio guy, guess what? You're and if you used to be a corpsman, guess what? And if you whatever, and then we got team leaders carrying sledgehammers. It's like right because That's ounces we, we're going in just I mean, with all due respect to everyone, just shooters. That's it. What the fuck is going on? What, what were your th- what were the because you're bringing Cairo, no doubt about it, right? Oh, yeah. It was that was the only reason I was there. Go get Cairo, go to the team room. And then because yeah. allegedly Cairo knows something about pipelines. <laughs> <laughs> he does <laughs> and he can fly so, what so were you, when it started it. to click what, what were you thinking when it starts to click once we figured out exactly what was going on that yeah. was, it was like oh shit yeah there it is and it was a fucking great feeling buddy it was like okay we were used to getting shut down quite a bit so try yep. not to get our hopes up too much yeah but 
just the fact that that was brought to the table was like, oh shit. And then once we got the brief, I'm sure you had the same feeling after the brief that we received was like, oh shit. Well, they, the, the thing that got me was when they were telling us, because they gave us like a day off before we're going to North Carolina. And uh, they come back Sunday. It's like, who's who's going to be wherever we're going? And they went through a list and they said something about uh, pack Afghan deaths from a certain agency. And we're like, wait a minute. If we're going to Libya, why would pac Afghan desk be there? Right. And somebody right, actually we, said it on the drive up to North Carolina. I remember being in the van and somebody's like, I wonder uh -huh. if we're going to go get him. I did too. I I was I was in one of the vans too. And I was because uh, I remember driving down there and the, one of our boys, and I'm not going to say anybody's names, was driving though. I'm in back with one of the O's, one of the officers. And then, you know, I'm up with some other dudes and and I looked at him and I go, this, this isn't Gaddafi. They found bin Laden. And uh, the boss looked at me and goes, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. And we started discussing because he had seen a thing, a map or whatever to make. It's kind of clicking. And then our boy up front goes, and he said in the rearview mirror, man, oh, or he said, Nisro, Nisro, we kill Osama bin Laden. I will suck your dick. <laughs> so still, <owes> you. <laughs> still waiting on that one. <laughs> Where were we on that one, dipshit? <laughs> So then, I, so I remember we we drive down there. We stopped at some shitty little gas station. We go into a place I'd never heard of, and then we went into that room where there was like a pot of coffee and a dozen donuts. <laughs> yep. And what I remember, mm -hmm. and I don't know, because we went to classroom, and I I remember the the CEO of the entire team coming in and said, "The reason you guys are here, uh -huh. this is a, this is as close as you've we've ever been to Osama bin Laden." Love and that just guy the, too. just the, the look around and. What people don't understand is I would remember being in awe of how professional every shooter in that room was because it was kind of like a right. Cool, we going now? Especially when you have him telling you that he was yes. very well respected. Have him step up and be like, This is what's happening. You're like, Oh shit, that oh. guy just fucking said that. Hell yeah. Dude, out of body, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, oh shit. He just cool. I think because how many I mean how many target briefs have we been in before everywhere? And it's like, yeah, this is this is uh, Abu Hamzi Chachi. Right. But that motherfucker gets up and shows you a picture of Osama bin Laden with his alias as you're like, oh, that guy. Here we go. <laughs> cool. Okay. Let's see well, I, I brought my shit. You guys bring your shit. Let's fucking roll. <laughs> That's right. Dude. I know y'all did. And then uh yeah. we I think they briefed us on how they found him for maybe three hours before. Yep. We're like, all right, I get it. I don't need to know. I just, I'm just going to believe you. The intel was solid. That's yeah. Well, and sure. and that was so cool too, because you know, we're at a point in the war. I thought where so many people were doing so much stuff just to get kind of check the box. And I was wondering where are these super secret spies that actually know spy shit? Not just the, the guys that watch the movies about the CIA and, and make cool names like knife for themselves. When they came in and explained it, I'm like, Holy shit, we have these people. I am so glad yeah. we are on our side. Yes, 100%. And that was the confidence. I mean, you know, we all knew how dangerous it was. You can step down anytime, make sure your wills are filled out, your life insurance policies are maxed. We knew what we were getting into, and yeah. our job was always dangerous. But this one was like, all right, you fucking better make sure. And if it wasn't for the intel that they gave us and the, the confidence that we had, I don't, I, there's so many smart guys on there that, it's happened before. You always work around the box and just would have been able to be like, no, this isn't the intel was solid. Like, okay, yes. this is worth maxing out the life insurance policy because we believe you. Holy fuck. I actually this felt bad. Like, what are you gonna do after this? Because you've obviously dedicated a lot of time and effort into this. What are you gonna do next? But anyways, so it's like very good job. And they actually nailed it. They nailed it too. But I mean, you brought up an interesting nailed. point too, because I remember being that that being said a few times, like you can step down at any, you don't have to go. And having that conversation too, with each other, like guys, this is what we came for. Right. This is it. <laughs> this is fuck. Yeah. I'm going. And, and even with the, you know, cause I mean, just to set it up a little bit, we would train and then they had that model all day long, all night long. And then it's mm -hmm. like, um, you know, this is it. Like this is probably the last one for all of us. We're, 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 we're not coming back. There's a good chance. I mean, how many, not alone just suicide vests have we seen? How many HBD IEDs have we been in? Who, where we're flying to, shoot, shooting us down, gunfights on target, like some, something. This is going to be different. <laughs> yeah. Well, even, I mean, I remember a conversation too that with uh, what if this happens? Because, like, 
you figure with Pakistan, they're concentrating on India. They're not really looking at Afghanistan, but with our luck, just like underways, <clears throat> if we're out on the boats, it's going to rain and lightning and fucking 10 foot right. swells. Um, with sure. our luck, the E2 from the Pakistan Air Force is ha- going to happen to be there with his finger on the pulse watching the border just to shoot us right. down in these experimental helicopters. Right. Exactly. So, but, but everybody, we, nobody stepped up. So it was good. We all got to- but it was cool. So the, the only thing that got me was the training. Like we, so mm-hmm. we would train hours and hours and hours in helicopters. The, the thing that I started to despise was all of the fast roping we kept doing. Remember that shit? And I remember thinking, oh, I remember. I'm not going to make the mission because I'm starting to get tenant. I like, I sort of have severe tendonitis now because of all that shit. You're carrying the fucking dog every evolution, fast roping. Fast roping. I remember you saying that too. We were doing, we were all about contingencies, but it's like, okay, the iterations are starting out. We, we had put in so much training in the past where it's like, we're fucking solid. I get the contingencies. And the one contingency that happened, we did not train for. But I remember you doing that. I think they gave me the saw and the dog once. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then you were fast open so much. You're like, God damn. I'm like starting to starting to feel it. Well, it's, it's almost but, the point. Let's be smart about it. Like, can, can we just assume we fast rope? Do we need to do it every single time? <laughs> Let's just assume, well, it's like it's like going inside and clearing the – it's like we don't know what the house looks like and we don't want to know. Why are right. we clearing these things? Let's let's talk about the contingency. That, wasn't it you that said that the helicopter could crash in the front yard? Let's talk about I that. I don't think that was me, but, yeah, somebody thought I it thought was. it was you. I don't know. That was said one time and, like, everyone's going, yeah, I see yeah. that idea. I don't know. <laughs> helicopter could crash in the front yard. I'm yeah. Sure shit. Noted. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> So, um, we do that. And then, so we, whatever. And, and I was, I mean, just, it was cool to all the experimental shit. I, they came out with those. New, I actually have the gloves right, right here. Um, the new ones that were like, cause we're thinking, well, do we go old school with the, uh, you know, do you hit them off or what? And then like the supply, not the supply guy, but the supply rep was like, well, these are the new ones that you can do whatever. And as soon as you get down, you can shoot and all this. I still have mine. And it was just tweaking our gear, everything we wanted. Um, yep. and just the, the level, the, I was just in awe of the level of the professional tactics this team had, the the ability to – because, I mean, it was impressive to work, but we'd all been working together. When we got back to whatever shitty-ass barracks we're in and that model, just the way people thought of this, this, how we do that, this – and we're just contingencying the shit out of it. And of all the shit we came up with, the, the <laughs> only thing that we didn't happen. The one we thing. Even, we even went out um, – <laughs> so we went out west, and I won't bring that up either, but – um doing and like we were explosives or whatever but that's when they brought the the big wigs out and i think admiral mullen was there and he was the chairman of the joint chiefs and you and i were in line with next to each other and um he was walking down the list like so we're done in let's call it nevada <laughs> and uh <laughs> and he was like saying and he said something i, I should have forgot what we said to him but like well like, that's the chairman of the joint chiefs man and he's talking to barack obama every day and like this is we're fucking going man we're going for sure yeah when we did that walk through it was like oh shit everybody's getting briefed this is what's happening and then we sat around for a second waited for a little phase and the next thing you know it's the green light yeah the next thing you know i'm sitting on a helicopter looking at you pissed off because you brought a chair and i didn't bring a chair that's funny <laughs> so the yeah so now we're on now we, we'll fast forward a little bit we leave from uh and that i mean leaving leaving from jalalabad it was just cool going out there because they had those lights that are shining out. We have these transformer helicopters or whatever. And I did, I brought my little tri chair and you, so you and I are in the same bird. And uh, I remember, so we got night and now I mean, like, you know, normal mission, whatever, shake my hand, boom, I'll see you in two hours. But now we're like hugging it out. Like, all right, man, fucking, this is it. Um, I remember sitting in the chair, the Cairo's right next to me. You're right there. Yep. Here we go. And that lift off there is like, you know, as opposed to turning left, now we're going right. And it's like, Fuck, man! <laughs> Here, Here we, we go. go. Had Kyra Here we on my go. Lap, looking at you, trying to sleep in the chair, doing whatever you're doing. I'm trying to sleep, put in my AirPods, just jam was, out. It was a pretty long ride. I was counting. I was counting. Counting. Okay. But I had. I, I. I still have this with me too, behind me. I got my shit right here. Um, remember that they, they they were like dog bowl, but baby diapers that you can pee in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Someone came up with that. Like, you can just pee in these. I was like, you know what? I'm not even gonna trust that new technology. I'm bringing a Gatorade <laughs> yeah. bottle. I'm peeing in that. Oh, I know that works. It's a- Tried and true, man. You got to piss yeah. in the gator, but that was a long ride, dude. It was well, my, well, my obviously the biggest fear is getting shot down. My second biggest fear was getting in a gunfight with a full bladder as soon as we land. Like, I don't want to, yeah. I mean, I'll piss my pants. I've done it before. I should have done it since, <laughs> <laughs> right? Every day almost. But so we got a 90 minute yep. flight in. And what were you doing? What were you listening to? All kinds of different shit on my shuffle. But as soon as we were, 
on the final couple minutes in before I pop it out, you know, for the one minute, three minute, whatever, when I decided yep. to pop it out, it was Money Talks by ACDC. Get the fuck out of here. Ear. Yeah, and I was like, oh shit, that was a good one to kick it up. Yanking and banking coming in. Yanking Fucking and banking ACD, the whole yeah, way. <laughs> ACDC's playing in my fucking ear. We're oh, here. Oh, you know, God. things get shut down quite a bit, but you get the fucking three minute call, and we're like, uh, we made the trip. We're here. Pop out the fucking iPod, put it in my dude, pocket, look at my GRG yes. one more time, check Cairo, and uh, here we go. Started happening. I remember that door opened up, and it's like, we're not in Nevada. There, this is a resort town. There are lights around here. And I remember just that, like, that glass cocky Navy SEAL, like, this is some serious Navy SEAL shit we are about to do. It was pretty serious. <laughs> and so so uh, the plan was simple, man. Dash one, go in, fast rope. We'll drop the, you know, you and Cairo off. I'm going to yep. go up to the roof. I already, I was calling my team the martyr, the, the martyrs brigade because we're going to blow up. <laughs> blow up. <laughs> and and as, as grandma used to say, that is when shit went sideways. Yeah. It went sideways for a second, but it actually worked out in our favor. So yeah, I dropped security off. I was perimeter. Then started doing the sweeps. Yep. Went up to fast rope and then all of a sudden lost lift. And those 160th pilots again saved the fucking day. Not only did they soft land it in the open courtyard, wait for the fucking rotors. I wasn't on the helicopter, but I'm assuming yep. guys wait for the rotors, jump off. Primary breach was, uh, looked a little sketch, right? Walled off. So it's like, huh, look at that. Don't see that every day. Go to the main gate. And by the time we got to the main gate, the guys had opened up like, come on in fuckers. Gates open. <laughs> I remember that because we, cause we had a failed breach on the Northeast corner. And I, I came over and said, we're going to blast the carport. And someone said, no, we'll open it. I'm like, what the, we'll what do you mean it. you'll open? Where the fuck are you? And the, <laughs> right. the, the thumb came out. Come on. They literally come on in fuckers. Like, come on hey, in. <laughs> hey, I, shit. I left free fall jump master just like this. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so it yeah, actually so, went from almost catastrophic to holy shit. That worked out. Yeah. That, and that was, I mean, it was just so cool because, uh, now we got again. So let's, let's go back to training the initial SEAL training, if if you can just control it for a second in the chaos, it's going to be okay. And that's kind of what happened, don't you think? A hundred percent. Everybody was calm. I mean, there's a fucking helicopter crash, and everybody was cool enough to get in the compound faster. <laughs> that's pretty. Not, not, I mean, not even com, not even calm, but there was like the. I mean, we were so good because we talked about communication, and we were so good at uh, shutting the fuck up. But like, you would hear the occasional joke. <laughs> right. Like what the huh? Did you, <laughs> hey who hung this bra off my nods <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> but um yeah we get in and uh um it was just, i mean my my the, like the one of the main things i remember uh i remember thinking was um how proud of everyone i was because this whole place is going to blow up at any second this place is rigged yeah. there's suicide bombers everywhere but look at these guys man it's like just slow is smooth and smooth is fast and look at them go no one's panicking no one's talking um, yep. and then I, cause we had, what did they give us? 32 minutes to be in there about that. And yep, we, kept, we, and, and we, we, we squeezed that into about 47 minutes, <laughs> which is fine. It all worked out, which is fine. Yep. We got, a, we, 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 so we got, we, we did what we came to do. Um, and everyone on the team was fin just phenomenal. And, uh, we did some sets of the site exploitation, way more shit than we thought our breaches went out and, the EOD guy and they had their, I mean, imagine that like the, the, the city's going to collapse in on us. Now they were so good to keep the cool, to put the charges on the super secret helicopter, blow it up. And now here's the part that no one talks about. God bless the air force. We have to call in another army helicopter and Hey, who knows how to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember the extra helicopter coming in the QRF. And they set the breach on the helicopter. Yeah. And we're back on the back wall. I remember that. Because I, I remember asking a guy, like, hey, how, how much time is left on that fuse? So that might have been you then. And yeah. And like, like 30 abort. Seconds. Fucking do a racetrack. That fucking helicopter did a big loop. That explosion went off. Yep. And it was literally like something out of a fucking movie. That fucking pilot flared right through how the smoke cloud. How awesome and landed and was so like, How what? fucking Hollywood was that flare? That, that was Hollywood did. as Dude. Shit. Dude, and I'm I remember and like you know we so we still want to live, but I'm like, should we tell the admiral when we get back that we almost blew up the third helicopter? Yeah, but it was oh. perfect. Those guys that were making the calls, 
which is smooth as fuck. Like just yep. boom. Like, hey, just you see it, like breach has 30 seconds, infill one minute, like, oh cool, do a race. It was just so it was like nothing's happening, it's fine. Do a race track, just call them yep. as fuck. What would it you would see again? And that's that is tactics to the to the the highest level when because so Admiral McRaven, who was in charge of the whole thing, he's back in Jalalabad, he's talking to the agency and to the White House. But we're sort of talking to him, not really. He sees the helicopter crash, and he he being one of the finest officers that the military's ever seen, knowing if he freaks out the White House, nothing uh-huh. is going to change anything. So I think the word I got is all he said was, um, obviously, we've had a contingency, but don't worry, my guys are prepared to handle it. De-escalate force, right? Simple. How, how yep. badass is that? Now, okay. Almost blow it up, but it, obviously we got to get the Hollywood shit. I'm pretty sure we got a <laughs> selfie uh, when the, with the smoke cleared. So now we're on the 47. <laughs> we got dudes from Blue Team on there. Um, and now we're leaving. Mm-hmm. So uh, we got, what do we got, 90 minutes to do? What Now what are we thinking? I remember thinking, shit, mm. I, does anyone have a dip for Nisro? <laughs> 100%. You got to have a dip. Put it in my headphones. So that was, that was cool. We had a pack bird and had Cairo in my lap. Yeah, so it was like, all right, what are we going to do? We're going to sit here for ninety minutes and hope to not get shot down. That's it. Listen yeah, the, I listened to the jam. So when we lost Falco, I used to sit there on the helicopter ride on the back and listen to "It's a Great Day to Be Alive" by Travis Tritt with Falco. Right after, right? You know, we're I'm going to tell Travis Tritt you said that. I'm I'm telling him that right, right now. Um, Dude, we well, to- and pe- what people don't realize too is what what a small group of guys this is. Because I'm sitting next to the sniper who initiated the fire to rescue Richard Phillips. Right. He was in my wedding eventually. He handed me a dip and said, he literally handed me a dip and said, take one of mine, Nisro. Now you know what it's like to be a hero. I'm like, what, the f- what in the world? Now you know what it's like to be a <laughs> How? Well, well, cause, well, no, because seriously, no, you because when, when we, when we, when, when he saved the world, <laughs> right? He, he, um, no, here's how cool he was. Because when, when he did that, I remember saying to him, I was like, dude, you because for the captain filtrate, I remember saying, Do you realize you just did the most important thing in the history of the SEAL teams? And his response was, Cool, can we go home? Cool, yeah, that's now, okay. So, nine, 90 minutes yep. out now, mm-hmm. what? So, you listen to a great day to be alive by Travis fucking Trent. Well, I cannot wait to tell him that story. I was shuffling through in the I used to listen to that with Falco. I mean, you know, we're, we're doing we had some great operations, we did some good work. You get done with one of those operations and you're flying back home. Everybody's still alive. Got the dog sitting right here. Holy fuck. I'm doing the best job with the best people. And I would look, that song would come on. I got my fucking dog. It wasn't my dog at the time, but it was our dog. Got Falco right here. It's a great day to be alive. It was a fucking great day to be alive. When Falco died, I literally couldn't listen to that fucking song, buddy. It oh, no shit. Me. So I, I, I stopped. Like every time I come on, I just, until when Falco died, skip it, skip it. As we're on that helicopter ride back, it comes on. And it was the first time I'd listened to it. And it was like fucking perfect fit because it was a fucking great night of their life. And I, you know, I miss Falco, but yeah, it was, it was perfect. That is absolutely incredible. Again, I, I had no idea that that is incredible. Just the way it, com- it comes together. So, oh shit. So, yeah. okay. And then, um, I, I, I'm I, one of the things I was thinking was, well, okay, okay, let's be honest. Now they know we're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yep. So didn't somebody come over the radio and say they're yeah. scrambling the jets? Yeah. Yep. They said that, that and 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 um yeah, that was cool. And that was good to hear. And there was um a, <laughs> so I I heard uh, later, not even when we got back, but like years later, that they we did have assets, um, but it it wasn't like I, I I'm a, I'm a, I'm never a big believer in in the need to know basis. Like tell your people what they're doing and why. But there was so much technical shit and we had so um such a precise target like okay i don't need to know this i just trust you but yeah they said they they were scrambling jets i remember hearing that and then um Mm -hmm. just the way they said our our boys made them reconsider which i think is badass that's what i was kind of assuming happened the people in the situational room or whoever was in charge Mm -hmm. was just like hey you fucking better not like (laughs) i'm 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 thinking like a call to the presidential palace type knock it off shit oh yeah you better not like sure, scrambled them, but think about what you're doing. That's what yeah. I'm kind of assuming happened. Well, because I mean, I mean, I remember hearing rumors of um <clears throat> of uh, President Obama saying, like to the chief of staff of the Air Force, uh, "What do you need uh, to? What do you need to rain hell on Pakistan? Because my boys aren't surrendering to anybody." 
which right. is that's I mean, exactly what I can see. Yep. What I loved about that too is there is no politics whatsoever. This is US of A motherfucker. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. And you know what was awesome about that as well, but I'm skipping forward a little bit. But when we got to watch the news on the debrief after the debrief and you got to see America come together again like that. So nine eleven happened, you saw America come together. It was like that, but just a lot shorter. But it was like, holy fuck, when we turned on the TV and watched the news and people were going crazy and America was like, I was like, fuck yes, look at that. That is what I want. It just didn't last that long. I, like, I know. Man. I know. We, you know, we finished the thing. I remember getting the, the, someone came over the radio and said, um, for the first time in your lives, you're going to be happy to hear this. Welcome to Afghanistan. I'm like, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we, yep. like you said too, we found, uh, you know, we do the thing that we got the body, we showed it to the agency which was awesome. And, uh, and, and then we found the CBs because they have a pizza oven, some whiskey and showers. That's right. We got, pizza. And the, but, we got but that's when we, yeah. And, and I remember seeing like, th this is the first time I saw the word seal team six, like on, on the internet all over the place. But I remember looking at the team. We we're good. I remember thinking we are going to be the best of friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I thought the same. And that didn't last, but whatever. <laughs> yeah things changed a little bit it was different but we did the job and everybody performed like they always do except seriously when... and and yeah and that's that's the most important thing too is that what matters is uh this nation was attacked and when it came time to it the nation called the best most qualified available operators with the best pilots and um you have an, a no shit no fail mission and as a team fuck man we went in and crushed it crushed it it was, I remember landing back at the helo pad and as we're walking back to the hangar, looking around and being like, everybody's alive and he, we got him. There he is. And every single motherfucker is alive. And we've crashed a helicopter. <laughs> everybody's you alive. Might, yeah. I mean, we want to, <laughs> yeah, I mean, even, even, even before the showers, when, when we're, uh, I think we, no, we hadn't done the, yeah, we did a debrief, but uh, when they brought yep. us some breakfast sandwiches and they're like, Bin Laden's right there. And they're right doing there. the um, yeah. they're doing the DNA test on. He's like right there, and that's good for us to be talking because, you know, I've they said people have said like, well, it was a body double or blah blah fucking blah, and I don't give a fuck what people say right I now. Too. Like my answer sure. to that now is right. like, look, the the guy I blasted was in bed with Bin Laden's wife, so he fucking had it coming one way or the other. Right. That's all. That's all I, I'm saying. But yep. but like he's yeah, like he's right right there, and uh, just I mean that was just such a moment of of uh, I don't care who knows because we just proved that if you fuck with us, we have people that will come in and fuck with you. A hundred percent. It was cool. I remember walking back in the hangar too. And my team leader was right there and had Cairo and we handed yep. them off to the people that we hand them off with. And they're doing their yep. nasty stuff. And I looked at him and I was like, can I send Cairo? Just go get him and start tugging the body around. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, come on. These guys can't take a joke. Yeah. <laughs> the, fuck? the dog got loose i'm sorry he's crazy he, he's a he, he's got ptsd from getting blasted in combat motherfucker how funny would that have been it would scared the shit out of everybody oh Jesus. yeah man it was cool what's that knowing what i know now i would have said cut him loose <laughs> get him, cut him get loose him. i am am i fired after this fuck it it's worth it <laughs> yeah so i and I, I, you know what? I see what I think. I, um, I mean, what a great fucking mission. That was just insane getting back. Yeah. And, and like, even the stuff with, um, like the flight back from Bagram to Oceana to go yes. into the team room. And then I remember dudes from Blue Team that, and I mean, for, okay, let's talk about the, prof we said professionalism. We had dudes who were already deployed from that tier one unit. And they could have got they if I was overseas, if we you and I were overseas and someone came in to take that mission, fuck you. Oh, they, they were so professional the whole they time. Also, like we they were so professional because they knew the deal and we just have to keep it. Yep. We're all we're all the same. Perfect. You know the deal. If we were put in that position, it's like, well, fuck, this does make sense. We need to not it, say shit. It, it, it just makes sense. It is this what, is this, it just this makes is the sense. right thing to do. Yes. Everybody um, here's a professional. You completely fucking understand. We would understand too. And they had our back. They actually yep. fucking came in and had our fucking back and hung out on the line too. Yeah. We had to fly fucking deep into somewhere. They also had to fucking fly deep into somewhere. They went into that's the very, very true. And we so, had a, we allegedly had um, birds that you couldn't see. They did not. Right. But so I mean, even, well, I mean, even, even like with one of the guys we brought with us was from a different squadron because he spoke Arabic. Right. 
And you got to figure we we were done in Iraq and guys were giving him shit. Like, why are you still speaking Arabic? Like we're done with Iraq. And he's like, I just got a feeling. It's got a feeling, baby. How about how, I think about that all the time. How yeah. well did that pay off? It paid oh, off great. And he, shit. and he was, uh, you know, I'd love to, to, to talk to him again too. What a stud he is. What and, a uh, stud. I love that guy. God, I know. Right. And just, I mean, and, and he, again, one of the guys that like actually looks like a Navy SEAL. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he does. He plays all heavy, the heavy hands and 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 hair like like Hercules. <laughs> so handsome, but I mean, even, he's so handsome. But so even handsome. Getting, even getting back to to um, the, so back in Virginia Beach, uh, other dudes who were at Blue, so Blue was a squadron over there. They're there. They pick us up in the buses with the pizza and the stuff. We went to the second deck, and it's almost like we're sitting around. One of the dudes brought in a bottle of Blue Label because they're blue, and he said, "You know, I've been saving this for a special occasion, <laughs> and I think this might be it." I think this covers it. Yep. Yeah. So that'll sure. that's good. And you, you drink that. Cool. Where where are we going next? And I, you know, that's right. That's, you know where we're going. Yeah, we, we're, we're going to the ready room. room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh but, man. Um, and that. I, I mean, again, too. Sitting, good. Sitting there after we did all of our handing stuff over, and then they brought out the chairs for us and the food, and then we brought in the TV and get to watch Obama address yep. the nation with his canoed face sitting right there surrounded by the guys that I love was like, holy shit. That was pretty epic. It was, yeah, literally. literally, And I, this is the first time I've been able to talk to someone who was with me eating that sandwich, listening to uh, (laughs) Barack Obama say tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world. The United States conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al Qaeda, looking at, the canoed face of Osama right bin there. Laden. There, that's him, right motherfucker. There. And <laughs> and I remember thinking, how the fuck did I get here from Butte, Montana? Who? Hey, no where's shit. that? Where's that trailer trash dude from East Texas? <laughs> right, exactly. That's exactly. Well, because you got to like, figure, a few shit. months before that, you and I were at a jump at a canopy school in Deland, Florida, yep. and just learning how to fly canopies because that's all we're going <clears> to <throat> skydive. And, and I remember before, um, just before jumping out of the plane, I would hear you go, "Don't rock the boat." <laughs> Don't rock the boat, baby. <laughs> That's right. That was a great. And then that we went over to, to, to Kerr's wing stop in Daytona Beach every night. Like, what the isn't this Hooters? Right. Eh, whatever. <laughs> same, same. Yeah. And they, I, they so anyway, own, go ahead. They got us on fast on that one too. Because usually you're sitting around for a minute. But I remember after it was all over, we got our pizza, had a little celebration. Mm-hmm. We landed back at the beach quick. I'm like, damn, quick. we never get home this quick. No. And then it was it was a one, it was a one one shot. It was quick. I'm like, damn, we're home already. But one thing that was surprising is when we opened the door and everybody was there. Everybody. Well, I remember I the I remember the commanding officer of six came running through handing out high fives like he's going out um out of the tunnel for an Auburn football game. Everybody was there. And I, awesome. I mean, yeah, I know what we did was important and it really was, but it's it was late as fuck when we got in and everybody still got up out of bed and yep. met us on the tarmac and was like, Oh shit, everybody's here. Hey everybody. Damn. <laughs> cool yeah. hey somebody call annie we're opening the ready room that's right we're opening the ready room <laughs> that's what we did oh, that's <laughs> oh yeah and, and i mean and what i love about these stories right now that we're telling is that's where that's that is the peak level of morale for an entire i mean not even just seal team but like just the morale was so good it was so positive oh, it was so high and then and then uh awesome. you know well i mean then you get august then that happened so and that's why I I, I, yeah. yeah i i don't we'll talk about that on a different episode but uh yeah but i mean yeah. it was just what, what a what a mission what a what a time um yeah what so, a high high to a low low yeah. can, can you yeah. um so uh, can you talk a little bit about your book and cairo yeah so once we completed the mission as you said the president addressed the nation i don't remember how much longer it was in the media but cairo's news was the only name released <laughs> That's right. That's right. So they released Kyra's name in the news. And I'm like, well, we work with a lot of law enforcement. But all the, most of those guys are solid, but there might be some guys that like to talk and spread the name. I'm the only person with a dog that works at Dev Group that has a dog named Cairo. And I work with a decent amount of law enforcement people. And I didn't want anybody to know. I mean, shit, I didn't tell anybody anything for fucking ever. And it was just really weird. It's like, fuck, why would they put his name in the media? And then over the years, I started to see nothing huge, but like little articles 
of <clears throat> a handler that said he had Cairo and Cairo had titanium teeth. He had laser yeah, beams titanium teeth. I remember that yeah. out of his ass. Yeah, he, he did some stuff that wasn't true in pictures. I'm like, that's not Cairo. And right. who's this guy? And I even heard once that another SEAL actually said that he had Cairo. And I was like, oh, well, I was working at another job. And I was like, well, he must have just been a West Coast guy that's had a dog named Cairo. And he was like, no, I specifically remember him saying he had the dog that was on the behind me. And I'm like, well, that's weird. I don't, it's hard to believe, but okay, whatever, man. So after that, I just decided to write a book on Cairo because that was a big piece of history. His name was released. There's a couple of bullshit articles out there. That's not the truth. People read that. They're going to think that's that's our boy. That's not our fucking boy. He didn't have titanium teeth. He no. had his issues. He was a yes. fucking solid dog. That's a big piece oh. of history. I'm telling his story. A lot of guys might be mad at me for it, and I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's a book on Cairo, and everybody loves Cairo. And yeah. it was an honor to be able to tell the story, man. And it turned out well. I'm very happy with how it turned out. And at first, I was like, I don't want to really be a part of this. And they're kind of like, well, you are the dog handler, asshole. You have to be part of the story. So, you know, it's a little uncomfortable in certain parts. But at the end of the day, the story was told to, to honor Cairo. And not not just him, but how many badass dogs do we have at the command yes. that people just don't hear about? I mean, seriously, me and Cairo were very fortunate. And we got to do some some missions and some a big mission. But there was dogs, fucking Balto. <laughs> How oh, Balto, oh my God, say? yes. Oh, yeah. Think about that fucking dog. I love Cairo to death. The thing, and then other dogs, not just him. Like, multiple. Yeah. So it's, it's good to, like, shed. This is just a little light I can shed on what the dogs do and Falco sacrificing his life. There was many, many, many other fucking dogs that mm-hmm. were eating ass every night. And say, like, there's a saying in the book. I remember being in there, <clears throat> just walking in the team room, somebody was talking, like, hey, raise your hand if a dog's ever saved your life. Everyone. Every fucking body. And it was yep. cool to see that. And then these guys start talking. You're in the team room. So you're talking anyways. And the guys would just start talking about this night and this night. And it was just like looking around and seeing. The, it's just like it's a fucking thing. Dogs were used every night except for the Captain Phillips mission. He actually was there. He, he was flying around taking care of shit. He took one of the shots. Whatever. But <laughs> other than that. <laughs> I mean, what, what amazed me about Cairo is how he was able to uh, safely land that helicopter that went down in the front yard. That was incredible. All right, man. He picked up the control okay. real quick. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have thumbs, man. Give him a second. <laughs> right? But no, but I think that's just so, that's so cool, too, because uh, people know they're military working dogs. But, so, but something you said at the very beginning of this podcast is, uh, oh, Navy SEAL, very dangerous job. It's not, not necessarily. There are so many people out there with much more dangerous jobs than we had. We, I mean, we had the tactics and the assets, but think, yeah. but... Also, think about the, the, you know, there are the dudes out there driving every day, wondering when they're going to blow up. Patrol to contact. They've got dogs, too. Those right. dogs are saving. Like, every single dog that was killed in combat saved several lives when they went down. And that's, it's so important for people to understand that because, I mean, everyone loves dogs, but no ordinary dog. Um, like, I, I, I lived a lot of it with you in Cairo, and I, I'm crying at the end of that book. I mean, I don't want to ruin it. Is there any, I mean, is there anything you want to share or do you want people just to read it and f- go through it? Because... I mean, I can probably take it, but I, I'm not afraid to cry, too. Yeah, it's just like a Marley. It's a Navy SEAL Marley in there. It's a, it'll get you in the end because dogs don't last forever. But it was, it's a really, he was a great dog, big piece of history, and he was shot even before the Bin Laden mission. So it kind of goes through a little bit of my background, how we, a little bit about his background, how we teamed up, some of the operations we went on, some funny stories covers the big part and then it covers the end of his life and it's just as a tribute to him um yeah i guess i'm no. very happy with it man it turned out real well it was, Cairo, a, big, man. It was a big uh big thing to, to partake you know you only have one shot of writing a book for my my boy that i truly love and i mm-hmm. didn't want to fuck it up and it turned out good so well it turned out amazing and you did not fuck it up you, you did everything right i'm actually looking at the book it's right over there uh no ordinary dog um it's a i mean it's a must read twice at least uh, where where can people find Ordinary Dog? Amazon. I got my website, willchesney.net. You can pick it up there if you want a signed copy. Yeah, do that. Will, willchesney.net. <clears throat> willchesney.net. And yep. uh, No Ordinary Dog, get a signed copy. Um, that I mean, that's incredible. That that whole story is incredible. Just, you know, memory lane. This is not the last time you and I are going to talk on this podcast. That was incredible, man. But, you know, we'll, we'll get into uh, just some other stuff, some fun stuff. But, I it, again... It's it's important that everyone knows Cairo's story, um, how how Cairo lived with us, everything from combat to the big raid to the Bin Laden raid to 
the river walk in training, realistic urban training to hanging out in the team room to Sharana to all that stuff. Yeah. It's just a very impressive. So Wilchesney.net, no ordinary yeah. dog. Will Chesney, cheese. It has been such an honor having you on here, my brother. Um, Same. Just incredible. Um, yeah. So uh, thanks for coming in, and uh, we will definitely do this again, man. Awesome, man. Always great to see you. Thanks for having yeah, me on. Brother. Love you, awesome. buddy. Quite a story. Quite a life. Uh, definitely get that book. No ordinary dog. You'll you'll um, you'll enjoy it. And like I said, at the end of it, you will uh, you'll probably cry. You should. Um, so, uh, yeah, read that book, and if you're looking for a dog and you want a Malinois, you can get one. You won't get much sleep, but you're never out of the fight.